Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 52 of the Pylon Show. We're going to call this the Redux, the Retry, the Max Pax Part 2. Uh, there's no storm here in the Bay Area. Internet's been pretty good. I have no reason to believe we'll have any interruptions, but that's exactly when interruptions do strike. So we'll have to hold our breath for the next... And here's the other thing, too. We didn't tell our guests. We want to set the record. We've got a four-hour episode in the, in, the, in the can. Today, we're pushing for eight. Without further ado... <laughs> I want to miss work tonight. That's what I'm saying. I want you to call into the GSL, but can't do it. Tasteless has got it. Um, yep. He only does a podcast. I can't even go either. Anyways, right? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> what would they do? Yeah. Tasteless can solo yeah, that. Yeah, Nick would take it over. <laughs> Nick would take it all over. Well, hey, we got some wonderful guests here today. Uh, it is the same as last week. We're just hoping to have a more complete show. Shout out to Cobra and the team, by the way, for salvaging that and still putting it up on YouTube. It's still a good episode. It's just got rocky there at the end. But Mr. No Regret. Joining us once more. What has mm. changed in your life in one week since we last spoke? I see there's still that bearded man in the background. Literally nothing. Okay. I think, I think you have to go over like years and years for me to change my lifestyle. There's something calming in that though, right? Like that things are going pretty well then, I guess, if everything's the same. Yeah. Yeah, everything's going well, I would say. I, actually, there is one thing. Eric has arrived. Eric, ah, Eric and Risky have arrived. Eric. Um, I'd ask to see there. a picture, but I'm just afraid it'd be the same yeah. as the online one. Is that <laughs> Eric, you can see Eric is playing and looks like Risky's watching RuneScape by the looks of it or something? Wait, Risky's so, there? Yeah, Risky's next to Eric. Yeah, he's looking at us. I'm not talking about you at all. Huh. Does that mean Think that we can finally have an episode with Risky? I know we've asked him a few times. You want me to ask him in person? It's kind of hard to dodge those. Yeah, put it put the camera on him right now and ask him actually. Do you, like, you want to be on the pilot show? Put the camera on him. Hey Risky. The camera. Do you want to be on the pylon show? What do you say? What? what? He said, sure, buddy. He, he said, if you want to, sure. Okay. It's really Originally, important. he just laughed and turned around, so. <laughs> it's important to Dan and I that we get him before the Tasteless Podcast does, because that's our new competition, <laughs> so we really need to lock down this talent over there in Korea. But anyways, Jake's that's doing funny. well. It's good to hear. Uh, somebody who is, Jake, I, I don't mean this as a slight, but somebody who's doing better than you right now. I mm. want to introduce to you guys Does it exist? the Twitch Rivals European Edition champion. This guy, in mm -hmm. when Twitch pays him in about 66 days, he is going to be getting nearly $3,000, and all he had to do was play random a whole bunch and do well. It's Mr. Beastie Cutie. Congratulations, Beastie. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be back. Twitch Rivals was fun, and, uh, you know, being random... It's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. It turns out, yeah, yeah. Once in a blue moon, that me, pays off, huh? Yeah, it took me four Twitch rivals, but we finally did it. We Not got bad. one. Not bad. Well done, sir. Uh, anything else new with you? Are you uh, got any plans or anything you've been doing? Nah, just you know, streaming, YouTube, yeah. just content in general. Nothing new. This is why we try to mix up our guests because if you have too many StarCraft people <laughs> on in a row, you're like, hey, what's new with you? And they're like, nothing at all, dude. Nothing at all. It's only been a week. <laughs> In a week's time, I do nothing different. Yeah, I'm, I'm all good. Um, speaking of, well, no, actually, I'm going to, Mr. Dan Artosa Stemkowski recently, if you somehow live under a rock, you might have missed this, but he publicly announced that the Stemkowski family clan is growing once more, Dan. Congratulations. That's awesome. Right. And you said it's a girl. You already know. That's right. Another Three girl girls, one boy, Dan? That's right. <laughs> that's uh is it's, this uh, all backlash because you said you're gonna have a starcraft team or you you're these girls are all gonna they're gonna be starcraft players i hope so yeah that's all we can do aria doesn't seem interested yet but she's playing chess so that's a start right okay. you got to start somewhere start a little bit easier work your way up to it very good i was a little bit I, i'm gonna put this out there we, we asked the hard-hitting question of the show so recently dreamhack announced a one hundred thousand dollar all-female csgo tournament and then at the same time dan announces his third daughter <laughs> is on the way um, have you readjusted your esports strategy and is this some kind of uh, long con you got a, you got a bigger play at, at hand here dan well i mean it would be an easier life right to yeah. to play counter-strike than than starcraft um yeah but no okay <laughs> How would you feel yeah. if you had like a League of Legends professional gamer live with you or, or one of your kids became like one of those kind of pros? Would it, would it bother you more or less or would you not care or what? I mean, if that's what they like, right? Mm. I mean, they can, 
be a starving artist or a League of Legends pro or <laughs> you know, there's <laughs> what about Fortnite gamer? Ooh, that's a tough one. No. What about that Greg Gamer? <laughs> Listen, that's where you draw the line just they can do just about anything that they want not that you know it'd be the great if one of his kids became and... like a vlogger or something so you got like behind the scenes dan like raging in the background and stuff that would be great son of a brat still playing starcraft river <laughs> yeah. yeah well hey Greg, it's awesome news joking aside it's very cool um and yeah thank you guys again for joining us if uh we make our jokes, but this this is the same crew we had in the last episode. For some reason, you're confused as to why. A, they're great people, and they make for a good show. But B, um, we didn't get to we didn't get a full show last time, so I believe we're gonna still do the same questions from the previous week. I know that's a big concern for some people. They're like, "Oh my God, did my question get wasted?" No, it did not. We will be uh, answering those, barring a cataclysmic ending to the show as well. Mm -hmm. But that's it. We'll just uh, combine the questions that we missed last week and with this one. I have a good discussion for you guys. Um, before we get into Wait, what's up? What's new with you? Me? You're not so of us. Yeah. I'm glad you asked. I took third place <laughs> in what many people consider to be the much more difficult, crafty, and challenging version of Twitch Rivals, the North American version. Um, I'm not a <laughs> random player by any means. I'm a mediocre Protoss player, and yet I was able to overcome all odds and take third place. Uh, which, again, I'm not going to say everyone says this, but there's a lot of people that speculate third place is actually even a greater achievement than first place. Oh, I had a pig is all you had to say. That's sick. I had a pig. Uh, Jim Rising, you'll notice on that chart there as well. That's yeah. the hybrid caster. Oh, I didn't caster. even see him. Oh, M. Canning's down there too. M. Damn, Canning, look at that. One of the best American players. Yeah, it was a pretty incredible accomplishment. So I'm very excited. Thank you. Um, then I had yeah, a really congratulations. nice like, 35-minute stream after that, but people were super excited. It's fun. Other than that, I got a big Warhammer tournament this weekend, so I'll be I'm taking a list I'm really excited about, and if I win, I'll be very happy. It'll be the biggest tournament I've ever won, so we'll see. But Ooh. Where is it? Here, actually. It's in the San Francisco area. Oh, wow. Did you just switch your Warhammer race? Uh, yeah, I play like five armies. Oh, okay. There's 30 or something, and then each one has different factions, so it, you're, uh, it's not that uncommon to play different armies, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little crazy. My collections are silly. And I went into this last one. I was like, "I'll just buy the army. I'm not going to buy around it." And then at the end of the day, I'm like, "Wow, we need more. We need more shelves. I bought a lot." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> keeps happening. How does this happen?" Uh, but yeah, thank you, Jake. No, I'm, I'm doing well. Happy. Um, Brightburn comes Sounds out this good. weekend. It's a good movie. I'm excited about that. Godzilla down the road. All kinds of fun stuff. Let's talk about our sponsors real quick. Then we'll do this week at Starcraft. Then we'll do our topics, and we'll call it a show at the end after the Q and A. So first and foremost, well, no, not even foremost, actually pretty much third most, but AFKT has been sponsoring us. Mr. Lycan has been supporting us through his new endeavor that, that, well, not even new anymore. It's over a year old, I guess we have to say. Um, the T thing, you can use the code, is it Pylon Show? You should know that by now. It's always the same code. Uh, Pylon, just Pylon, to save 15% off on a purchase. But again, it's a fantastic guy that A, supports the show, and B, um, is a StarCraft guy, so just if you're drinking tea, check this out. You can also support us through Match Reno, where we celebrate the International Day of Something every single time, and that's usually what we do with the code. Today's code is Vanilla Pudding. Tell me it's the International Day of Vanilla Pudding. It is. May 22nd, Dan. <laughs> Did you know that, Dan? No, I did not know. Vanilla that. pudding day. <laughs> not just pudding day. Literally vanilla pudding day. Damn. So that it's kind of tough when it's these days, because that's a long thing to put in as the code, but I like that we're gonna hold on to this. So vanilla pudding one word, and I don't know if capitalization is important, but if it is, it's capital V and capital P. And that's capitalization like, is not important. That's not just important. To help people read it. Alright, Matt's saying it's not important, but Please do uh, put that into the code, and of course the code is always entered in through the link that's usually put in the chat, but it's also in the chat notes, or the uh, show notes rather. It is matcherino.com slash thepylonshow um, for this season, I believe. And you can also buy some fantastic swag. I saw some guys in our Discord saying, where do I get that in-control hug if I show up to Homestrike Cup? Like I said, if you have this mug, you have this shirt, you show up to a GSL... You make eye contact with Dan, that kind of stuff. We will hug you. Uh, we ask that you shower and, of course, maintain a decent <laughs> level of life. Uh, but other than that, 
That's that's good. That's redeemable every time. BlizzCon coming up. Needing a hug. I give great hugs. Dan does too, actually. Dan's a fantastic hugger. He kind of it's like I'm a, a good hugger, yeah. Yeah. I hug Jeff every time I see him. Oh, we're huggers. Yeah. It gets really weird on day three of the event though. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, weird for other people, I guess. For me, it's totally great. Uh, yeah, wonderful merchandise on there, and that's how you support us, of course. And as that prize pool goes up, at the end of the season, we generally try to put on an event to celebrate it, but also uh, reset it. So that celebration we're talking about, we're still trying to iron it down, but it looks like it's still going to be Jim Rising taking on JYP in a caster yes. showdown commentated by us. Uh, next we, week. Yeah, next week, we're I set. think, is the plan. So yep. once we absolutely finalize it, we'll announce it, but that is... Pretty close to being true. Um, and then there's, of course, uh, different ways of support through Matrino as well. You can check out 24 Hour Fitness. They'll give you additional money towards the prize pool. Um, and GameStop, which is a way to buy video games. That's cool. On to the primary way of us being supported, but of course, us also thanking you guys for supporting us. You go to the website and then click on the Patreon, which continues to go up. We're getting close to being over $3,000. That would be fantastic. I think it was like... October or November of last year that we went up over 3,000 for the first time. Uh, and then, of course, I think we took a pretty big break in December. So naturally, something mm. like a Patreon took a dip after that. But if just halfway through the year, we can already get to our highest point, that means the show's growing and your guys' support of the show is growing, which is incredible. So if you're a continuous supporter, thank you. If you're not, please do consider it. Um, this is how we pay our guests. We pay ourselves. We buy graphics. We expand and just grow the endeavor that's that's the plan the money i promise you doesn't go to a secret slush fund where dan and i well i mean i spend it all on models but he's got like a family and stuff so that's <laughs> yeah, on, that's, that's honestly that's the hostage situation you have like half that money not even half but some of that money goes to me which is then wasted on warhammer models but the other part <laughs> goes to like feeding and clothing children so it's like yeah. you don't you don't know where it's going you got to take the risk is what i'm saying <laughs> um so yeah that's it for our, our stuff. And now we'll quickly go through this week in StarCraft. Okay. I'm going to rail right through it. Let's do it. Uh, okay. So, of course, don't forget, guys, this week in StarCraft, we have this giant Google Doc that has all of your needs. Uh, we have a great calendar in there that shows everything coming up uh, right through from May to November. Uh, anything that I talk about, you can, of course, find more information there. Okay. Banshee tournament number 19. This is the women's tournament. Uh, or rather, number 20. It is, it's being played on May 25th. Check that out. Uh, the Alpha X Pro Series continues forward. Hino took down Paco Mike, 5-1, to one, and Rodzin took down Lila Kanan, 5-4. Uh, to four. Doesn't look like the next one is set up yet, but you can check that out on AfrikaTV.com hmm. forward slash Alpha X SC2. All right, Alpha X also has a Latam show match series by Enki and Romsley. Uh, the Gladiator took down Bombilla. Five to four. Uh, they continue this pretty regularly. Looks like that last one was on the 19th, so probably another one coming up quite soon. You can, again, check that out. Alpha X ESP on Afrika TV. The Alpha Team League. Uh, they're having signups right now for the uh, NA and EU amateur, semi-pro, and pro tournaments. Wow. Uh, the semi-pro division has a cap of 5,300 MMR. We're seeing more and more of these tournaments that are capped at certain MMRs to kind of give a nice competitive feeling to people, no matter what your skill. So oh. very cool. You can check that out if you're interested. Uh, a little bit more we have in here on the Alpha SC2 Team League. Looks like it's got up to the round of four. Uh, the Makers, Wolfpack, Infinity Game, and Alpha X all remain. All right, the China Team League, another one still going on. Uh, their matches for week six are being played in the next week or so. Uh, we still have Triumphant Song Gaming up in first place. Psystorm is down uh, by just a hair there in the last place, but it is a very, very close turn at the moment. Lots of really great matches each week. Uh, you can check that out on Wardy's Twitch channel uh, for the English broadcast. All right, the Master Swan Open, Sea Duckling Open. Looks like Serdokin ended up winning in the finals wow. 3-2 to two over Terran Lord. You can check this out. Of course, they alternate between... A bronze to diamond and a bronze to uh, Masters 2 tournament each week. That's twitch.tv forward slash cranky underscore. Is that a picture ducklings. of Surtikin, you think? I would imagine. Can we just say how amazing that picture is? He's given some face, but the his dog, dog looks amazing. Is like... 
<laughs> the dog is unimpressed with his opponent's play right there for sure. <laughs> it's a cute dog. It is. All right. Sentimentiento Latino, number Nailed 55. It. There he is. Yep. Eric wins again. Notice his awesome pylon That's swag. Get some shirt. for yourself at matrina.com forward slash the pylon show. Yep. Congratulations to Eric on another victory. All right. The Olima League, number 156, finished up. Zest took out stats in the finals, three to one. Looks like Innovation and Gumio were both in the round of four. What a ridiculously sack tournament every single week. If you want to check it out, uh, you can watch it over on Wardy's stream, on uh, Maynard's stream, but it looks like Maynard, because of he was at the event, Fear Dragon did it this week. Uh, so I guess that's probably a good place to go check out the VODs. Of course, they have a Patreon as well at Oli Moly on Patreon, which can get you those replays and whatnot. A great tournament there for the Korean scene. All right, StarCraft 2's Platinum Heroes. Uh, we talked about this a little bit last week. There's starting to be, a, there's like a Discord channel. If you are a Platinum player, specifically, not if you're a Gold player, not if you're a Diamond player, but if you are, wait, actually there's a Diamond tournament too. So <laughs> if you're a Diamond player, if you're a Platinum player, you definitely want to check this out. Uh, they are running tournaments and everything. Uh, check out on the Discord that is wow. linked in the show notes. Chioclet defeated Toon Dragon. Is Toon Dragon related to Fear Dragon, you think? <laughs> he <laughs> might be. Whoa. Wow. That's his goofy younger brother right there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Cyber Gamer Oss, LPL StarCraft 2 Challenger Season 2. Uh, well, there it is. You can check it out at cybergamer.com. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. I actually, uh, that was just added to the show notes, so I didn't read about this before, but check that out, guys, uh, if you are interested in that off scene and their leagues going on. It looks like it doesn't finish up until uh, the 21st of July, so uh, the All Division just beginning last week. All right, uh, the Diamond League by Duddles. Uh, the quarterfinals play on May 20 through 26th. These are... Uh, a bunch of Diamond League players getting together into teams. They have some really great names like Diesel Weasels and Stuffed Rhinos. Uh, so you can check it Intuition out. Intuition Sex Slaves is my favorite, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. David Kim Savants. I bet you that's a bunch of Protoss players. They're in second place. <laughs> All right. You can check that out. We have the website linked inside. All right. We had a huge upset in the Pizza Pie bi weekly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Astrea took down Eric in the finals. Out of nowhere. But really what I'm always looking for is where yeah. Starkiller. He actually lost pretty early on in this one. He, he lost in the round of 16, it looks like. Washed uh, up, maybe? Yeah, I was just going to yeah, say, Jake, I, I don't want to... Like, it's been a few <laughs> weeks since he's won a pizza. We're seeing him lose earlier and earlier. Is he just not hungry anymore? Is that kind of what it is? I think he's not hungry for success anymore. That's yeah. it, right? He's on a diet, okay? Um... Oh. Yeah, so Estrella wins, and that gives him his second pizza. We have some cool uh, trivia here. The weirdest pizza topping request. What do you guys think? Oh, wow. Anchovies? Okay, anyone else have any guesses? No? Okay, thanks, guys, for participating. <laughs> Glad to have you back. Jalapenos. It was Estrella with jalapenos. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I looked right. at it first by accident, so I didn't want to just be like, well, what the fuck? I, well, yeah. I was I was confused by Losira participating in this. Is he in there? Losira's in it. Yeah, Losira beats Star Killer. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Wait, no, that's actually... oh yeah, Kong oh, fucking Lucera. Koreans. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Koreans you're are coming over and taking like our Star Killers in bad shape. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I think the old Star Killer would have taken out Losira. Yeah, Estrella took him out. Estrella did take out Losira. That's pretty sick. All right, Eric's topping of choice. We also have. Let's check it out. Vero Verde Pepperoni Alcav Ofra? What is that? I don't know. No idea. In the chat no idea. But how, why does he get three toppings? That's what I want to know. He's I Eric. thought these were single topping. He's Eric. Come on. Yeah, I guess he gets what he wants. Artichokes. He asked for artichokes on his pizza? Artichokes? He's a I've never had that on a pizza. Abstrosity. What? <laughs> artichokes <laughs> on your pizza? You're going to have to check into that, Jake. I can ask him. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Leave him for now. You can do it later. Hey, Eric, 
Yeah. What, <laughs> what is? What, wait, what did you want me to ask him? Artichokes? Yeah, artichokes on pizza. Ask him who. Are artichokes them. on pizza? Yeah. Why? He said, "Why not?" Oh my god. He said he Ooh. wanted to try it. Listen, right. America's got to liberate Brazil now. I've, I've decided, so we'll, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Well, he's okay. not there. He's in Korea. There, so. There's oil in Brazil or something, good? I think. Yeah, we'll get there. I don't know. <laughs> no Jeez, doubt. Louise. There's lots of bad farmland. Let's go take it over. All right. Uh, coming up next on General Transmissions, wow. in-depth number eight with me and No Regret. Uh, we did Cyril's, uh anti-Terran run through that round of eight. Really mm. fun stuff that we got to learn. You can check that out. Uh, over on uh, the YouTube, Artosis yeah. TV. Uh, Probots, Limitless Potential Season 2, starting June 11th on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, you can sign up and support it. Check it out uh, You know, in our, in our show notes. All right, the, the Brizcraft, a Brisbane Starcraft LAN on August 3rd. A $2,000 prize pool. That is pretty sick. If you are in Australia and like StarCraft at all, you should definitely go check that out. We have all the links again inside here. Only a $15 entry fee. I'm sure all the best Australians will be there. All right. <clears throat> the Afrika World number 38 with Laughing Games and Falcon Paladin. Keen Haas, Creator, and Scarlet. Quite a lineup right there. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think that Scarlet's going to win this one. Uh, I agree. Yeah, May 25th. So that's just in a couple days. Check it out on AfrikaTV.com forward slash laughing games. All right, Horus Open number two is being played on Friday the 24th. It's for LATAM citizens only. Check it out on Twitch.tv forward slash Horus TV. Uh, Shoshi Opti's Archon Tournament <laughs> number one. Shoshi Opti. <laughs> uh, that's coming up on May 26th. Uh, it's an Archon tournament with a hundred twenty dollar prize pool, which should be split into two sixty dollar prizes for the Archon. Or teammates. one person can like both people controlling the amount of money. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, they have to go to the store together to buy something. Hopefully, you live nearby, uh, guys. If you want to play in that, uh, go ahead and sign up. It's kind of a fun thing because you can, you know, normally you only can blame your losses on balance, yeah. but this time you can blame it on your Archon teammate. Uh, the Dutch StarCraft League Nationals 2019. The DSCL has been around for a long time. Uh, it's coming up on May 26th. Uh, so definitely check that out if you are from the Netherlands. The Liga Guatemala Tica de StarCraft 2 2019 you Season 2. Yeah. yeah, that time I actually think I did. Uh, we've covered this a little bit in the past. If you're in Guatemala or nearby, you probably want to check it out. Uh, another Team Liquid map contest is coming up. The deadline is the 23rd of June. Check this out on teamliquid.net for all of the rules and everything. A lot of these maps get in the ladder pool, so definitely worth your time if you like to build them. All right, GGE Minis. Build of the Week is back. PVZ Hurricane Sentry drop into 7 Gate. Immortal Sentry all in. A very strong build there uh, by Hurricane. And... E-mini goes over it all for you, so you can check that out on the All Things Protoss subreddit. All right, Twitch Rivals, StarCraft II Streamer Showdown. We already talked about it a little bit. In first place, with third place, is In Control from yeah. NA. Thank you. And in uh, second place, with first place from EU, is Beastie Cutie. Yeah. Congratulations to all the uh, competitors. <laughs> Was that just you guys playing use map? Like, what what was it this week? I didn't catch any. Um, it just concluded, but it's two versus two archon, co op, and then one v ones. But they gave you fifty extra dollars, win or lose, if you played random. So this motherfucker here, Beastie Cutie, who's been playing random. Oh man. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. I wish I was yeah. allowed to play. So basically, if you pick the race and you won, you get seventy five bucks. But if you take random and you lose, you also get seventy five bucks. So what? Why did no everybody play random? Well, no, Everyone if you win, did play random. You play that's random that's you get oh. oh, now it makes sense. Well, yeah, what the? I it's got great. you. It was very All generous right. of them. People made, and then the best part was first, second, and third got bonus money. So Beastie Cutie got fifteen hundred extra dollars for taking first in in the money. So. He came out with almost wow. three thousand. It was a great event, let me tell you. Yeah. It was. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's what great. Cake <laughs> was laughing the whole time too, and then I got I got Nero, 
I random Terran, he random Zerg, and I'm like, this is great. But then, I proxy three barracks uh, bunker rush him, and I actually killed the hatch. And I think if I was a halfway competent Terran from there, I'm probably in really great shape, but I'm not a halfway competent Terran, so I died. Why didn't you just go for your mass widow mine strategy? I found that to be really I don't to I'd like to unveil it. <laughs> I don't want to do it in, in you know, like, yeah. He like this. He's saving that for GSL. Exactly. Yeah, not enough money in there. That's exactly right. Pop that one out. Needs to be yeah. bigger. <laughs> really yeah. fun though. It's awesome they do that. It had upwards of twenty thousand people watching, which is oh wow, awesome. nice. Awesome. Um, and it's also it's the Twitch Rivals channel, so it's like a different audience. I'm sure it's a lot of StarCraft people as well, but it just shows a different mm -hmm. light. Nate was commentating it as well as Axel Toss. Remember from uh, old school StarCraft days. Uh, and then they actually had Monk formerly from Team Liquid, who now works with Blizzard directly on the balance team. Um, and I don't know the other guy's name, actually, but they, they did a good job. It's nice. It's great they keep doing this. This is the fourth StarCraft one, I think. So, cool. Yeah, yeah I, lo I love that they keep switching it up. Like, they're not, you know, we they did campaign the first one with, like, all the achievements and to do the, uh, the campaign run. Then they did some arcades, some team games. Now they, cross. you know, they mainly, yeah. yeah, now they mainly focus on one-on-ones and they had co-op because of the new commander Yeah, that they uh, put in. Very cool. Hmm. Yeah, hopefully they'll start doing team games too and they can start pinning up each other against each other. That would be interesting. You'd have to pick your teammate and shit. You can do like high school, you know, dodgeball where you like pick certain people last. I think that'd be great. Oof. Yeah, only feels good here. I right? love it when people's feelings are hurt. Yeah, yeah. me too. <laughs> wow, you guys. That in depth is right. pretty savage. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Size Storm uh, 8, StarCraft 2 tournament going down in Virginia. Uh, looks like it's going to be June 7th through 9th. Uh, partnered up with Nerd Street Gaming. Uh, they have tournaments for StarCraft 2, Magic the Gathering, FIFA, and more. Uh, if you're interested, then check it out, SciStorm.com. Uh, SC, SC on the DL on dlive.tv forward slash Alaris. This is on May 28th and 29th. It's a two-day single elimination tournament with a $500 prize pool. Uh, just a tournament going to be casted by Alaris, great community member. She actually makes most of my good-looking graphics on my stream and my yeah. emotes. So uh, big cheers, sir. Jumping into some commentary. So if you're interested in that, uh, do check it out on dlive.tv forward slash Alaris. All right, Home Story Cup number, what is that, 19, XIX. Uh, 27th through 30th of June, coming right up in Krefeld. Uh, definitely something we will go over in depth when it gets here. Uh, okay, the artificial overmind by reactor. This is the thing where Cyril pounds a bot each month. Yeah. Uh, the story continues on June 17th. You build an AI in Python that can play StarCraft II and you try to rise in the rankings, the world champion Serral will face off against the top-rated bot uh, each time. And look at this quote from Serral at the bottom that I know he did not say. I know that he did not say it. Ready? Here, I'm going to read it yep. for you. From Juna Satala. The competition is international this time. He could have said that. That's definitely something you could say. Try to build your own AI. He definitely didn't say no. that. He has never said anything with an exclamation point. Not when he won the world <laughs> championship. Not when he won five yeah. WCS tournaments. That was not his. Honestly, maybe like two, three dots at the end. I yeah. don't know about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's like, how he shows the time is the dots. The trailing try to, off. Try to build your own AI. <laughs> yeah. Try to build All your right. own AI. This week in Brood War, let's go. Number four was won by someone called Deo. I don't even know who that is, but he beat DeWalt. Uh, Jayden and Gorinich on the way, so uh, cheers him. That's pretty sick. Uh, There's no way. That's yeah, a, that's a. It's just gonna be another name. I don't know. I I just don't know who that is, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> good good for him. That's a very very strong showing. All right, the KCM Race Survival Season Ten is continuing onwards. This is the kind of race battle where all the Players go into a chat. It's a very fun tournament to watch. You can check it out on Afrika TV. Uh, check it out. Uh, it's on Liquipedia as well. You can find some of the VODs and whatnot. Also, the Undermine podcast. This is on makingcomputerdothings.com. It's where they talk about all the botting going on in StarCraft 1. Uh, a lot of new guests this week. 
Birdberg, yep. <laughs> Ink, Ink Mardor, and Gene Chessel. Uh, they talk about Fuck. it. So. Birdberg, Ink Mardor. <laughs> Birdberg. Bird. What's your name? Birdberg. Like, why'd you make that idea? He's like, no, I didn't. That's my name. Gene Chessel, okay. and then in, in quotations, Sloth. Uh. Uh. All right, uh, moving on. Man vs. Machine from Jealous and New. Human vs. AI bi-weekly tournament. AI is going to the level of posing a challenge for Boudoir players as story and powerful as myself uh, and sarcasm. I have taken upon myself to organize a bi-weekly event wherein members of the SSCAIT Discord can pit their souped-up AIs against me for a best-of series so that the Boudoir bot scene continues to grow. If you want to check that out, if you're interested, go ahead. Looks like this weekend, awesome. Apparently, someone made a pylon show sign. What a badass. Kiev. Yes. You're the man. Thank you. That's an excellent sign. It me. is. Great artwork. Hmm. All right. Also, this week in awesome. My name is Total Biscuit, the life and times of John Bain. Uh, there is a little uh, documentary being made. Um, I'm not sure exactly when it comes out. I did watch uh, the... The trailer, it is a tearjerker. Uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing that when it comes out. Check it out uh, on on their YouTube, which you can find in the show notes. Uh, this Week in Awesome. Uh, stream and win a flight to Korea. Afrika TV and Inspire Me Korea are teaming up to send a streamer to Korea. The event starts on the 5th of uh, June coming up. So if you want more information, check it out on Afrika TV. Dot com and inspire me korea.com all right this next news we already went over also this week in awesome uh co-op commander stetman uh did you guys play that yeah. today so why don't you mention about it yeah, it's fun it's the it. it's the robot zerg um you have your pseudo creep is your buffs so that you can give to yourself and your opponent uh, he's got funny lines it's all the robot Zerg stuff, but taken to excess. So some of them have like anti-air missiles coming out of them, that kind of stuff. There's shields on Zerglings. Mm -hmm. It's just a fun different take, and it plays very differently from a lot of the other co-op commanders. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not a co-op guy, but I had a good time. I just tried them out for you cool. know, like two hours today. All right. Well, guys, check that out for sure. Uh, your support towards that, and it's supposed to be a very fun game mode, uh, is very appreciated. All right, the Swan Machine Bundle is going to expire coming up. Uh, that is how you get Jeff's emo in the game. I didn't realize that you needed to go through a certain website to claim all this stuff. This is the only one that I claimed so far out of the ones they put up there. So nice. I needed that Jeff emo. Yeah. I had to make sure of it. Thank you. Everyone should check that out so that we have this wonderful thing inside the game forever. Literally, this producer's note right. here. Blizzard has given us five keys to give away of this dead man, and those will be going live. Whoa giveaway in chat shortly so if cool. you're in chat just start typing something in about three or four minutes and you'll be eligible wow continue all Perfect right giveaway, guys. Look at that. <laughs> what are you guys already typing it's in five minutes what are you doing somebody remind me oh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't help now <laughs> you're the I host, later you want to win this giveaway get out of here <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing crooked about that look at this picture all right, uh, moving forward, public service announcement. <laughs> announcement. <laughs> do you clip funny and control memes? Do you make StarCraft content? Do you create tournaments? Do you win tournaments? Do you win pizzas? If so, this man with Eric wants your best clips, obtained player photos, and notable StarCraft content. Send them to Cobra Venom or The Pylon Show. Damn, oh the men in black over here. <laughs> <laughs> I love these. Look at Eric's face on a new body every time. I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, and I think that's that's it for this week in Starcraft. Okay, thank you, Dan. Yeah. Oh God, here we go. Look at the show notes real quick here. Over uh, That was okay. So before we get going here. I want to make sure it's not elsewhere on this. Um, there is no good time to say this, but there's two things that were kind of... They're emotional, and I want to touch base with them real quick. As Dan pointed out, there's a trailer for the Total Biscuit documentary. The timing of that trailer is not um, incidental. The one-year anniversary of his death is actually 
gosh, it's either today or it was it was definitely, someone in the chat can correct me, but it was within a couple of days of now, uh, give or take. Um, so watch that documentary, it's really cool. But Jenna did a stream about this, so I definitely encourage you to check out Jenna Bain's stream on Twitch. Maybe watch the VOD or something like that. They also do the co-optional podcast where they might have talked more about it at length. I've been asked by different community people, you know, to have Jenna on or do any of that kind of stuff. And I think we'll definitely eventually have Jenna on as a host, but I was not going to ask her to come on to talk about her uh, dead husband. She That's that's kind of her thing to do. And John is a good friend of all of ours and stuff like that. And it's really sad. And I want to honor him. And that's what we're doing right now. And will always do. Um, but it's just a, it's a tough subject. It's just, there's no, you know, we have a lot of laughs and joke around on here and um, that kind of subject and that, that kind of emotional weight is, is still tough for us. So if you're wondering why that didn't happen or whatever, that's the case, but there are places to celebrate um, the amazing life of John and the ongoing legacy that he'll always leave behind. So I encourage you to do so. Um, and then the other thing that happened this week, too, and I've been asked to talk about this, and it's, again, very sad. A community member by the name of Jim Tony passed away in a car accident a couple days ago. And he was a big fixture in Up a Tree Zelda's stream, as well as various other streamers. And it was a big emotional thing. Um, I'm not going to claim to have known him. I played him on the ladder, and, um, you know, it was more, it was kind of, it was, an, it was a moment of pride for me to see how cool... The community was in response to that they were very emotional they had a stream where they kind of talked about his jokes and his memes and the lasting impact he had and then there was people that have made names to remember him and stuff like that so this is a loving awesome community and uh we lost a good person and we're, and we're really sad so the pilot show wants to honor him and i know a lot of you don't know who that is but just know that people that are near and dear to us care a lot about that individual and anytime someone dies of course uh, in our community or otherwise it's really sad so that was a rough, it was a rough week in that sense. We had, we had some sad news, um, but please, if you have a chance to stop by up a tree Zelda stream and pay regards or whatever, or just uh, be kind, just be a little bit nicer for a week or so, uh, or whatever, and try to know that there's people out there dealing with some rough stuff. Um, but yep, yeah, wanted to touch on that. I should have uh, put it in the show notes and I apologize for our producer stuff like that, but it's been really busy. Uh, but this stuff just happened and... Our hearts go out to him. So without further ado, and like I said, there's, I, I don't know, we, we, we had to, like the, the, my host note for you is we talked about John, John's passing when it happened a while ago too, and it didn't seem, like, there's just no time to mention that. You do it at the very end of the show, and then that's weird, you like close the show, you do it at the beginning, but then we're laughing later, so I don't know, so stuff happens, we've got to deal with it. Uh, but let's get into our first subject here on the greater topics i will uh, okay post wcs spring review so we just had wcs spring in kiev um this is going to be our big big topic there were some really exciting games there were some great results and it was just overall a very interesting tournament so i'm not even normally i, I kind of say something and then lead into it but i kind of want to just organically throw it to a couple of individuals here did you guys first and foremost did you all watch wcs spring no regret yeah yeah yes i watched okay <clears throat> it was the first I event i watched pieces but <laughs> i haven't yeah it yet. well that's okay if we don't watch all like 80 hours of it or whatever but um <laughs> it was the first one that's uh star ladder handled it was in kiev ukraine what did you guys think who wants to take their first out how was the production for you how was the the show let's talk about that first and we'll get into the results um, I mean, everything looked good. The the stage looked good. I mean, we had some great commentators over there and hosts and whatnot. Uh, you know, it, I I thought that they did a good job. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it it looked like a very professional, well done event. I thought that the the videos were good as well. Like I I was digging the video that kind of you know showed the epic shots of of all the players as they you know all the players that that won qualifier seeds and things like that so that was neat um yeah at the end it like it, i do want to give a little shout out i think Cyril's getting way better at interviews now yes he's given way longer yeah. answers which was really cool to see because he's just kind of like growing into it he's getting a lot of experience with to it to your point it's neat. funny too because you can hear him go because specifically in his winners interviews smix was just like it's your it's your fifth one it must feel great. He was like, 
or no, she act, specifically she says like, "Do you have any final words you want to say?" And he's just like, "Uh, thank you to everyone." And then that that's like where normal Sarah would have stopped. And he was like, "You guys were all so awesome and supportive. I really appreciate yeah, it." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "He's learning. Look at this." No, he's he he really he did great. Though one thing I am a little bit nervous about for him is you got to be careful, right? He's uh, when he lifts a trophy, he normally lifts like this. But the thing is, if you only lift like, like he's going to be like got big muscles on one side, but yeah. you got to like we should see him lifting up the trophy like yeah. this sometimes. Yes, because he lifts so many trophies that he's going to get like an imbalance in his yep. muscles. It's a concern. So he's got to watch out for that, especially for this young finish men, too. If they overdevelop one arm or the other, it can get pretty awkward. <laughs> um, Jake, as a guy that watched it and, you know, your mm. captain uh, of the hen house in Korea. One of the things that we saw added to this, and it was understandably a big hit amongst the players, was that knockout bracket. Uh, how was yeah. it for you as a viewer, but also as someone that's conscientious of, of course of players and stuff? Like, did you think it was a, a great addition to the, I, the format? I absolutely thought it was a great addition to the tournament. It made a lot of sense. I, we see a lot of players getting through the knockout bracket that would have just been out of the tournament. Like, for example, Lambo, Kelizer, all of these people did moved on and did really, Hero Marine. You know, like all these people were out. Yeah. Like past tournament they'd be out but this tournament they had another mm -hmm. chance and some of them advanced into the round of 16 and some of them did not but the point is they had another chance another opportunity it wasn't just a, a group and then they were out and i think this should be something that's adapted to all tournaments if yeah. possible but obviously there's a limit to how many computers and time everyone can put into it but i thought this whole tournament was extremely interesting and from a player's perspective there was tons of players getting into the round of eight that I would not necessarily expect to get there, like definitely possible, but not, you know, favorites to do it. Goblin, um, for example, guy. Goblin yeah. getting in. Yeah, Goblin was a big one. Time doing it again. Time, mm -hmm. time doing it again is really impressive. <clears throat> and <clears throat> yeah, I thought the whole tournament went really well. It was nice to see Special get to, you know, out of his round of four curse. Yeah, I was well, hoping hey, we'll, that he we'll would put up. We'll talk results in a second here. Don't get, don't get too far ahead there. Yeah. Okay. Beastie Kitty, well, yeah. how'd you but, enjoy it, man? Um, Okay, so I had a little different of an opinion for the knockout brackets, okay. but first things, they, they had some sound issues that kind of didn't get fixed throughout the tournament. Like, the, the mic was peaking a little bit from the from the casters, but other than that, I thought production was cool. I liked the, the videos. Uh, I liked that they had, like, a quiz at one point, I think, as well. Yeah. And I think that's, like, a great way to save time. Like, you can throw down, you know, like... 100 questions for one event or 50 questions StarCraft related and just play two, three every break. And you can rotate them at the end. But I think it's a great way to kind of keep people on the stream and not be like, oh, 10 minutes? Screw this, you know, I'm out. So I like those things that I put in. Uh, also, the the shots they had with the players, you know, looking all tough. One, one thing as far as that goes, <laughs> I would love if they gave the players – because because – you know this probably as well. Like they told the players, like look badass, and they're all like, you know, looking at the camera. I wish they gave them more freedom to just like do whatever you want. Like if you want to have a pog champ face, do that. Like show off your personality. I think okay. that would have been cooler. Not necessarily to be like, okay, sit in this way or or that way, because it doesn't match everyone. The in problem is nobody has a personality. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's, the, but that's fine. The people that do will get it out. I, sure. did, I think that the problem there is now I've been on a lot of these photo shoots and seen a lot of these. And like, especially the younger players, the pro gamers and stuff. If you ask them to make some sort of pose, they get really uncomfortable and they don't know how to do it. It's actually much better if you tell them exactly what to do. No, it I agree. I agree. So I agree better. for sure. I agree with that for sure. But just give people the option like, hey, you can do yeah. anything you want. If they're like, I don't know what to do. They're like, okay, do this. Because out of like 20 people that did that pose, I feel like one or two players actually looked like it looked good. Like yeah. Showtime <laughs> had a cool pose. Because that's how like he's built, yeah. and you know it looked good. Showtime can never a lot not of look other good, players... though, man, To be fair, sorry. Showtime can never not look good, though. To be fair, you could you could literally have <laughs> yeah, I his mean, forearm immersed in his own anus, and he'd still look pretty good. Yeah, I, I think that you know, Artos is right. Majority of the players would just be like, "Just tell me what to do, so I can get out." But 
I think just giving like people the the chance to like do whatever they want would be. Uh, I agree. Cool. I think someone like Harstam could find something really interesting. You know, yeah. like yeah. there there are players that could do something fun. Yeah, so that would be like, cool. But um, oh yeah. So as far as knockout bracket, so I think it's a great idea for the players, and I, I still do. I, I thought that last week we did this, but when I was watching, I wasn't really that interested in in group stage number three compared to previous events because i was like well mm. it matters who advances but i don't really care to watch because people are not really out you know mm. there's no suspense of like oh my god if he loses his game that's it and then there's a lot of kind of less of those matches that are suspenseful because the knockout bracket matches are not getting broadcasted as much you're mm. kind of only seeing the last matches of each those little brackets yeah that's that's actually a pretty good point it's kind of like a production tab type of thing where it takes away some suspense you just kind of you know everyone everyone can but it did make some kind of cool stories like i haven't watched it yet but skillless like that run through the knockout bracket that was kind of the surprising cool run where i look i'm like oh damn that's like and the thing is he was never going to get too far in the tournament but that knockout bracket gave him some space to show a lot of who he is rather than, you know, he lost, he, he, right? He went in the knockout bracket round three. He would have just been out of the tournament at that point, right? Yeah. So the fact that instead of that, he actually makes it so deep into the tournament, I think that that type of story right there is what makes that knockout bracket still worth it. Yeah, I think overall it's better. Uh, I mean, this is not like production fault or the system's fault. It's just, it's not possible to cast all the games, right? Like, it's just not possible as far as production mm. time goes. <clears throat> but I'm I'm not really sure how to go about it. As a like, if I was competing, this is way better. Obviously, you know, you don't have two bad series in a group stage and you're out. You can still play through and stuff. But just as a viewer, it was kind of like, meh. I have a question. Would you rather it be more televised than the knockout bracket then? Like, like perhaps skipping some of the group stage three matches for, for knockout bracket matches? Because then there should be suspense there, right? It's basically the same thing. It just moved into a different spot. I mean, honestly, it's more suspenseful to look at the knockout bracket, bracket round five instead of yeah. winner's match yeah. in group stage, right? Because whoever loses is out. That's it. But... If whoever is fighting in the first place of group stage number three, it's like, okay, he's going to get better seed, I guess. It's not, it doesn't Please. change anything. Uh, so basically, in the yes. Chat, and this was <laughs> yeah. an issue that people were talking about during the event itself, but I think this all would have been a lot smoother had they had more English community streams as well. For a lot of this tournament, there was some mm. kind of lacking coverage there. Uh, don't know who to point the blame at, but that's definitely like... A, Thing that can be improved by the next Kiev event, which is the next WCS stop. So that would have helped quite a bit. Um, I agree with the comments on the the knockout bracket. It is, by the way, as far as I can tell, wildly loved by the players, which is a good thing. Um, mm. It created a much more positive environment for them. They were all over Twitter ranting and raving about it. They said the computers were very good. In fact, they said the computers were so good, it brought Adebisi out of his hibernation on Twitter to passive-aggressively complain that the DreamHack computers might be just as good or slightly worse than the computers <laughs> of this event. Um, so getting an Adebisi to tweet uh, in defense of the computers they use and fork the blame over on Blizzard as it's their fault for the computers not being any better was an incredible thing. So um, that's to give you an idea of how positive it was for the players. But also, I want to give a shout-out to a lot of players... There was some funny-as-shit content coming out from this event by these players. There was... Really funny, like, uh, pseudo-sympathetic videos trailing after every one of Lambo's numerous losses throughout this tournament to kind of tease him to <laughs> poke fun, but it was fun for us as viewers. Harsten with the memes. Uh, they had a weird camera angle, which is, this is this happened like four years ago at a Katowice where I took some pictures of Dan on a monitor, but for whatever reason, the angle of the screen and the monitor made his head look like it was like an 85-pound drum, just like this gigantic thing. This happened to the players here as well, and the pictures are perfect. I should have given Cobra more of a heads up again. I don't know if he can find them, but my god. Smix was tweeting them. They were out there. They were so funny, but it was just... It's kind of it's kind of funny, because normally I'm at these events, so I don't get the get this sense, but being at home watching and seeing this content come out, because I follow these people on Twitter, and it's around, 
and this StarCraft Esports Twitter account was doing a great job. Like the coverage was very oh. good. Oh. It, it created a nice feeling. Speaking on Twitter, what did you think of all those players with their like fucking? Did you see their messages to Marine Lord or whoever the fuck? Did you see what? this? The what now? Yeah. Like where they they were basically like all encouraging Marine Lord. Marine Lord said he had a bad tournament or something, and then like everybody's like, "Come on, Marine Lord, you can do it." It was like every single player. Yeah. Like ever. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. Like we never see like interactions like that from players. It was really cool to see them cheer each other on and stuff. I, even if it's a meme, I thought it was really cool to have that vaccine stuff. I'd love to see more of it. It was cool. from players. I agree. Yeah. And it, it's just it's, a lot of that's them coming into their own too. It's not like we give credit and say Star Ladder who's like hopping around like get on your Twitter accounts, guys. Like that's not what's happening. It's just these players have so much personality and they're starting to share it a little bit more, which is fun for the yeah. Community. Like even just the European Zergs all getting together for that stupid clip where oh yeah that I'm was sure great too that, <laughs> they're all clapping and stuff with the immortal yeah the, the Rainer the Rainer great. thing was perfect <laughs> yeah. yeah everything about that clip was amazing I mean it, definitely I I like it 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 makes the event more fun when the pros are kind of having fun and doing stuff like that yeah yeah this is all this all the stuff it just makes our scene much better our esport much better to yeah. watch because there's more like uh, context to the players just more personality behind what you see on tv and i think all this stuff just helps our esport grow and helps our our scene develop more yep. so if any players are listening or anybody that's notable in that style or in that side of the community please keep doing it it's really good for all of us including yourselves yep huge shout out to those players the event it just had a really nice feel to it now also it's not quite backtracking but just kind of clarify i was going into this and we were all kind of speculating, but I, I think I was the one that said it or something like that. There's a lot of buys in that opening round, and it was the first event at Star Ladder. So there's some kind of question marks. I would say, outside of the peaking mic and a couple little things, overall, I think we can be very happy with this. The viewership, again, was very good. Um, the, the, the numbers came out on, on Reddit and, and various different places, as, uh, again, and they were higher and, and doing better than years previous. So that was just awesome to see. But now let's move into the results, and I do think this is a big part of the reason why some of this stuff was as successful as it was. It was an exciting tournament. It had some pretty great ups and downs. I thought Smix was killing it on stage as well. I mean, if we're if we're doling out the the pats on the back, we were very lucky to have Smix. Uh, she has grown into just a fantastic stage host. I think she asks great questions and um, does a good job getting some of these. And by the way, it's it's one of the hard. It's 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 job that's so hard. Nobody online is ever going to know how hard Smix's job is. They're just not. I know it because I was a DreamHack interviewer until literally got to the point where they stopped asking me to come on because I I wasn't good enough. Basically, I wasn't good enough at asking patients how to get interesting. It's impossible, but Smix is somehow able to do it. Um, but yeah, we had some great results. What were some of the highlights for you guys? Oh, and Claire's, uh, by the way, too. I do, on the I do want to mention that you were great with that Thorzane victory at DreamHack oh, when you were a host you. for that. That was that was your shining moment, I thought. Yeah, yeah, an thank you. And with MC. Never forget. Bitch, please. <laughs> I, uh, I have people outside of esports, they ask me all the time, they're like, man, that one guy disrespecting you so much. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, the guy that said bitch, please. And I was like, dude, no, that's MC. It was that's scripted. MC, man. It's a funny moment. Um, that was great. But we had some crazy results here. I to kind of call back to our previous episode, and this part was coherent. Yeah. Uh, and I I say this with a little bit like I I'm gonna soften it because I'm not I'm not a reporter yet, not quite. I fucking love Lambo. He's one of my favorite guys, and yeah, he is yeah. awesome and he's very skilled. But here in the pilot show, we got to kind of report stuff as it comes in. I think this is another disappointing tournament for him, and and I kind of called it out. I. I that prediction was correct. I also said Bly was going to do really well. I think I was wrong on that. <laughs> um, yes. Bly had one of the most exciting games we've ever seen, but um, he tripped and fell pretty earlier on and, and kind of had a, a rough tournament in general, so the home audience wasn't able to carry him. But Lambo, tough. I mean, the well, group he lost well, it to Pro. Yeah, that, that was that was pretty bad. Like, like if it wasn't for the knockout, he would have been out to Pro, which would be like an insane upset, right? And yeah. he did go through the knockout and came back and yeah. did lose to Serral. But so yeah, you can't. I mean, if his you lose his barrel, you did you did all right, right? Like if that's the guy that knocks yeah. you out, you can't be too upset. So I don't think it was really like yeah, it's disappointing that he didn't come higher in that previous group. But you know, uh, he beat like you thermal in that beat first round, which that's is strong. fantastic. Yeah, he beat he beat Haas and stuff. But uh, you know, losing one three to Serral, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold that against him. I still feel like if he had played someone else in this bracket, I think he would have. 
likely top aided. Well, you know, I think he's still right up there. You guys are not wrong. I think it was interesting about this is strictly speaking, no, this is not a bad turn. Beating your thermal is incredible. One three to Serral, who eventually becomes a champion, is just absolutely red hot. Yeah, you're right. But Lambo said this himself. It was either in the interview or on Twitter. He said, without the knockout bracket, this tournament's a disaster for him, right? Mm. Like, he, he got a group yeah. that, in his own words, was the most, like, winnable group he's ever seen or something like that. Obviously, a very <laughs> Lambo-esque comment. But uh, he ends up taking, like, third or fourth, and he actually would have been knocked yeah. out. And, and, and to players that he absolutely should beat, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah I would say that I was possibly one of the weakest groups include even in, like if you add him in like yeah. having this group is one of the most doable groups in the whole thing uh pro you know pro has highs and lows uh goblin is pretty much unknown like in tournament aspects we know he's good but even if we give him first place like lambo should be a clear second i think here um so i i felt like he was clear to get out came third third place so yeah well thank thank god for the knockout bracket i guess for him like probe, did really have, probe had a crazy good tournament when you yeah. look at it right no to you get did out of the group like I that three two namshar who's yeah a very beating namshar also three two that's but this legit. is this is like an unexpected i think feel from from my perspective i would not expect probe to do this i would not expect oh, yeah, probe to beat sure. lambo i'd yeah. not expect yeah. probe to beat namshar yeah, like sure. this is an impressive performance from probe don't yeah get me wrong. i don't know if he's got like sick builds or what but or if he's been practicing a lot. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah. Normally, you don't expect uh, the Australian seeds to do too much. You know, they kind of they make it in, and maybe they'll have a few good series or something. But oh, it's been a he had some very time. legit wins. So hmm. Probably has been carrying that. the Australian scene for a couple years now. And, and even hmm. then, like 16, 24, those are really good results for him. But beating the Amsher, that's huge. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think he beat like two solid Zergs. You know, he didn't beat someone at all lanes and he just defended, or someone that plays greedy and he just punishes them. I think Namshar and Lambo are very similar in playstyle. So beating both of them is pretty, pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, Special did really well, kind of as we were talking about last week, where it was expected. And that the final series against Serral, it did feel like he could have won the first two games. Uh, Sarah even mentioned in the interview. Um, so mm. really, really great run from him. Uh, there was someone else that I was just looking at that I wanted to mention. I assume Goblin, no? <laughs> no, well, we already kind of went over. I mean, it, it's cool, though, that we have, like, some of these young players from all the races. Like, Clem was doing well. Uh, you know, Rainer always is doing well now. We have Wait, Goblin. how old is Goblin? Seven, oh, like 16 or... So, oh, yeah, so that's crazy because Rainer, Rainer, Goblin, and Time are all extremely young. So that's almost Skillet half of our time. round of Skillus as well. Yeah, but I'm talking about our round of I'm talking about our round of eight specifically. Oh, okay. Okay. Three of the yeah. round of eight players are all like below the age of 19, which is insane. 18, like these kids are really young and they're all top eight. Like that's in, that's really impressive considering a lot of RTSs seem to get like player locked at the top level a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So this is you know this is really exciting that we have like this kind of like new players coming up and doing so well and hopefully i mean even i would count sarah into that bracket and into that bracket like these are all pretty young people doing really really well just really cool honestly after seeing clem play against showtime i think if he played almost anyone else in round of 16 except like the obvious you know neeb Serral, rainer i think he would have advanced he played really good against showtime and making showtime fall apart is is hard in any matchup and and showtime barely barely got through that so mm. i was uh very very impressed by by climbing that series for sure yeah yeah also shout out um to marine lord who had in the chat here earlier as well but this is a guy that you know a lot of people maybe uh, not forget this per se but it's it's worth mentioning he just kind of came back to competitive starcraft like this year you know it's uh and it's he's already getting really good results there as well pretty cool yeah, yeah. He, well, he just seems like such an intelligent player. Uh, I didn't get to see the series versus Laser. I was actually pretty surprised that he went zero and three against a Laser, even though Laser, I I quite like three. his play. One and three. Oh, I thought it was zero and three. Oh. Well, the bracket is one and three at least. Oh, okay. wait, Marine Lord, a Laser, yeah. three zero. Yeah, I thought it was three zero too. The bracket says one and three, guys. So something may have happened. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. It, three and one is is. No, it looks like a three. Right. Yeah. Okay, uh, but I mean, <laughs> Marine Lord is definitely like one of the guys that I'm excited to watch. And you can kind of see the rise of foreign Terrans in the tournament, which is kind of nice. 
it mm. like you know there was a period where everything felt very zerg dominated it was like zerg players and neeb basically but now it it feels like you know showtime is back we have the rise of some protoss players and some guys just below that tier uh that are really good and then we have like a very solid set of terrans you know special time thermal uh you know masa is doing Hero Marine. better and better clem is doing better and better yeah hero yeah. marine is always up there i agree so that's actually really really nice because that was one thing I was a little bit scared about is if the foreign scene just became completely Zerg dominant. Yeah, looking at our top eight, like our top eight looks great with race race like distribution. Yeah. Like really, we had a great top eight. I could not have asked for a better distribution of races here. Yeah, in the the when I saw that round of eight, right? I, I woke up in the morning and checked the bracket immediately and I was like, oh, that's that I, I couldn't ask for a better looking bracket. The fact that you have the complete newcomer and goblin, a bunch of young players, good racial distribution, and also a good country distribution, right? Yeah. We don't have like three Polish players in the top eight anymore. You know, we're not. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like crazy. you have someone from China in there, which is amazing. And then, it, yeah, it's just there's so many different flags and race representation, everything. It's just, yep, very, very nice. If the rest of the year looks kind of like this tournament, I mean, we're in for such a good circuit. So, yes. And this is another. Oh, go ahead. But I'm going to put the spanner in the works, as it were. One of the things we just kind of gloss over these days, because I think we got tired of talking about it, but this year has been a little bit different. Serral out of the gates looked dominant. We've had those tournaments where he's had that close ZVZ, or he's even lost a series, perhaps, in the opening and group stage and stuff. Nah. -uh. Serral at WCS Spring from beginning to end, was in god mode. And in the finals, once again, Special, who's in red-hot mode for GSL, looks really mm -hmm. good. Some people picked him to win this thing. Shout out to Jake, saying he was going to do very well. He, he did not shake on his confidence about this, and he was right. The finals were kind of lame. You can say that he was maybe going to win the first two games. I will tell you, I guess, but the door closed pretty quick, and Serral made the finals actually kind of boring in the sense that it was like, oh man, Serral struggled against Battlecruise in the past. <laughs> Bungle! Like, every spell, wah, and just, like, 35 yeah, yeah, yeah. Corruptors came in. It was the stupidest fight I've ever seen. It, it, and it was so bad that, to me, the rest of the series from Special looked like he was breaking away from his game plan because he thought it would mm. not work. The rest of the series was him going, that's what I do in TV <laughs> right now, and it doesn't work. You know, <laughs> Dan and I looked at this because we're like, what what's going on? He was looking at, like, a liberator on the other side of the map and he'd get his, all of his stuff fungled like the one thing you're supposed it's to look at the happening. one thing you're supposed to scan and like not get your stuff fungled and he's just like moving a liberator away from a corruptor in the top left and loses all of his battle cruisers so like yeah i i don't know it it kind of felt it was extremely one-sided also i was disappointed by rainer like rainer felt like it was quite one-sided too the rainer serral matches like, Serral just looks insane, like, like always, I guess. Which, we always, just, like I said, we almost don't even talk about, right? Because it's just like, eh, Serral's doing it again. <laughs> but this year's been the question mark year. People have had caught up to him. He had dropped a few series. I know that we're not facing Koreans. So let's just put that out there again, because there's going to be six people in the chat. They're mostly Brood War fans. They're going to go crazy if we don't mention that right now. But, like, yes, this foreigner scene stepped it up. Serral had tripped against Rainer earlier on. Uh, he had he had lost to some of these other guys. He's lost some ZVTs. We're all like... Well, he doesn't train ZVT that much because the European scene. This tournament, to me, if he can maintain this pace, it slams the door on a lot of that speculation. Yeah. <laughs> it it, it yeah, really does. Like, especially his ZVT games, right? Because that was kind of, that was the big point that we were talking about as a leftover from WESG, where Innovation ended up defeating him. It's like, yeah, his like, game doesn't look that good, right? He changed it completely. For this tournament, mm -hmm. completely played a completely different way. Uh, you know, obviously some of the games are battle cruiser games, which force you to play a different way. But even against just the slightly older style of late game Terran, he just he fixed himself up. He used very tempo based play. It was like a very difficult type of thing to do. Uh, it was amazing. I I yeah. almost felt like he was stronger in this tournament than last year because last year it was like it was just like okay, Serral's better than everyone at everything. And it's like, yeah, it still feels like he's kind of better than everyone ever would think, but it, he, it seems like he's even smarter than he was last year, yep. which obviously everyone should be getting smarter and better every year, but yeah. like by a bigger degree almost. Like I was, <clears throat> I've been so impressed. I haven't watched every game of his from the tournament yet, but 
so far he just he looked ridiculous. Yeah, I think he thinks a lot about his games. Like he practices, obviously, but he thinks a lot. Like, what should I've done? You know, what I can improve. And he's said a couple of times in the interviews, the hardest time in ZVZ he's had is against Scarlet and Rainer. Mm-hmm. And both of them play very different play style. Mm-hmm. They do a lot of Ling Muta. You know, Rainer did the Ling Lurker. And yeah. I don't want to take anything away from Rainer. I think Rainer is like amazing player. And he's just going to like keep improving constantly. Uh, but Rainer, when he had his win, he did it with strategies that Cyril not necessarily hasn't seen before, but hasn't seen at that level executed. Like he's seen Ling Muta, right, before. But Rainer played it so well that I think it caught Cyril off guard quite a bit with the Ling Lurker. And from then on, I think he just kind of practiced against that because he said himself my roach versus roach i don't mind playing against anyone but he said specifically he worked a lot and he wanted to rematch against rainer and i mean now that he did kind of showed it why Mm. he wanted to uh to play him again he's not quite there yet where we're getting the full-on hollywood holding the like title belt above his head but cyril and that call out it was starting to pull up my heartstrings it was a little bit more of a like and get on Smix again to kind of goad it out. She's like, you want to face Rainer? And he's like, yeah, I want to face the Rainer. And I was like, oh my god. It was, it was fun. <laughs> Crowd screaming. Yeah. Oh, you hate fainting. <laughs> and you know what I like too is that I think Rainer, in his own way, is the kind of guy to, to play up to it as well, right? We've had various tournaments where Rainer's been like, I want Cyril. I want to, I want to dethrone him. And that's, that's fun. Yeah. I do think Rainer has to come a little bit more like more to a solid play style in ZVZ and like in against Serral specifically, like the, these, these play styles aren't necessarily the best when they're figured out. You know what I mean? Mm. Like actually yeah. Nick and Dan and I actually went over this as well. You remember the ZVZ style where we, we basically said, once this gets figured out more, it feels really bad. Right. Mm. Like he adds a couple Bane links into his army composition, all the links die, you know, like the, these kind of things are not things you can really take out and continue to use to a high degree of success because Sarah will adapt really fast. He's really good. He's not just going to sit there and do the same thing over and over again. So I do think he needs to just become one of those like sick players like on the same level of, of Sarah to actually beat Sarah, which is really hard to do. Um, and on Scarlet's side, it's a little bit different because Scarlet plays in a totally different region where she can kind of just develop these things constantly. So she can keep you know, pulling cards out of her you know, sleeve constantly. Like that's those are basically the two options, right? Like you keep pulling cards out of your sleeve until there's nothing left, or you become a solid player. And yeah, and the, it feels the, like it's harder for Rainer to to do that. Yeah, and the more time passes, Cyril kind of you know learns more and more what people can do, and there's like <laughs> less and less options, no matter what race you are, to pull off. Like if this was if Special and and Cyril played maybe three months ago with the Battle Cruiser stuff, Cyril might have lost, like right with the special skill level. But because people have been using BCs so much, it's it's kind of become the norm. You know, you don't see Battle Cruiser like, wow, he opened BC. What is he going to do with it? <laughs> and Cyril knows as well, right? Same mm. thing with late game. He probably got so much practice since he lost the innovation. And he just kind of like, uh, you know, just shutting down one strategy at a time. And I think in order to beat him, you actually need to be like, like Jake said, either his level or better which in a macro <laughs> game, which is just... It's realistically <laughs> yeah Impossible. i don't know yeah <laughs> like it's really hard Sue kind of i think, right, to I think right now the the best race to win against Cyril is probably protoss because i, I think protoss strategies and all lanes right now are very sharp and still kind of changing and evolving i don't know what kind of terran is going to take or zerg to beat him in a roach versus roach game but i think it's going to be extremely extremely hard i don't have it in front of me what's the last protoss to beat Cyril? <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. I mean, well, Showtime I think, I took think... two games. <laughs> it was it was That's... technically Neve in some cup right before BlizzCon. I Last believe. year, right? Yeah. But it I'm was like, to... it was some cup and like the games were kind of weird. It wasn't like the most important I, yeah, thing. Yeah, it didn't feel like Cyril. I yeah. think the best late game Protoss arguably would be stats, right? We would Maybe argue that. Last Unless you guys year. can come Generally. up with a name That's better Generally. than oh, stats. And stats better. literally has really close series against him last year. I have yeah. no idea what he looks like this year against Cyril, but that scares me 
that the best name we can possibly come up with in Macro Protoss has already gone up against Sarah and lost. And he's from a totally different region that's kind of in its own bubble. Well, well I, like, I, I think for Supreme Late Game, though, Neeb is... Really? You think Neeb is better than Sats? Supreme Late Game? Supreme Late Game, maybe, yeah. I think Stats might be better at getting there and like better at some other things than need but like when you actually get to the end game army compositions i've never seen a protoss that handles that like need it's possible i think they're a little different right they are like they, they are different macro players and i think they both have things to bring to the table i think what we need to beat Cyril is we need Haas Arcano. and stats to sit down you know speak <laughs> the same language and just like swap in and out randomly and then maybe maybe we can do it because I think I just it's just really hard. I don't know, man. But I, I do agree. I think Protoss has a good shot uh, at beating Serral. You think Protoss has the best I, chance to beat Serral? I don't think they have the best chance. I think Terran actually has the best chance. Still. Good. Uh, and the no, reason so when you say good, the reason why are you full caster what? when you say they have a good chance? Or are you just doing that thing where everyone's got a good chance? Or they T just give Terran has the best chance by far. Right. I think Protoss. It seems like Protoss is been figured out from Sarah unless we come up with something new. The Jake, all ins I agree have a good chance would of Would you say Protoss him. has the third best chance? <laughs> no. You think Zerg has the third best chance? Get the I think. fuck out of here. It's Zerg's that beat In him. In the long it's the, the longer we go, I agree. I think that Zerg has the hardest chance of beating him. Look, I think I think that this is weird how you're ranking races because if we're talking about WCS, I think that there's mm. like six players that can possibly knock Cyril out of a tournament. I was, I'm not talking about any players. I'm just talking yeah, about Yeah, I'm races. talking about any players, yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't really care about the races as much. I think it has more to do with player power than with your race at this point. Because I'm Cyril's talking about like a hypothetical, like amazing, like the best possible player we can think of. What race would, would we give that person to beat Cyril? Like, He's Zerg, yeah. Max Fax. Um, <laughs> Max Fax would do it. <laughs> He's got to get his MMR a little bit higher to, to be, hit him. I don't think Just anybody in the WCS circuit right now has a favored chance. I thought the only person possibly was special. And after watching him get 0 4 now I feel like there's nobody. Like, unless Neeb has gotten better against Terrell specifically, because Neeb before did not look to that level. It's hard to say, right? I, th I think. So Neeb and Showtime? Showtime, no. I feel like. Has I mean, had many took, opportunities. <laughs> well, he took two games the last uh, time they played. Four when was that though? Totally says Challenger. Yeah, no. It, Showtime every time he the games, plays. But... Even even at like Nation Wars last year. Yeah, Showtime it's always it's, really it's good never a stomp. Yeah, it's yeah. never a, a stomp. He it's has, always. Even if it's like a lot more wins for Sarah, the games are close. Like mm. Showtime is on the brink of it. You know. Yeah, that that's why I said Protoss and Neeb. I mean, he has a good record against Cyril if you compare it to any foreign player, mm. except maybe Rainer, as far as taking games from Cyril go. But, maybe yeah, Scarlet. Yeah, it's me, oh yeah, Scarlet me, too. Showtime, Scarlet, Rainer, Scarlet, kinda, Rainer. The people like you guys all. And here's the thing: they can do it. But Hang on, they're not going to consistently do it. I think you're all lucky. Point. Maybe Showtime. Hero Marine's not on this call because right now he would be going fucking bonkers with rage, and that guy gets really mm -hmm. angry. Hero Marine. The original Serral Slayer, the Arya <laughs> of the of the actual WCS scene. Both have the same body types. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> he's a guy that consistently gives good games to Serral and has actually beaten him as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's just a quiet little Protoss hate train happening here, and I'm I'm too nice of a guy to see it happening, but. No, it's not. not wait, show what, time. Why hate train? You guys think Protoss is the best chance to beat Serral? You've I never... said Terran. No, with, with, no, I think with all ends, yeah. I think there's so I, many I variations at a high level that you can mix in with, like... I've even seen Sue lose to, like, five gate off of, like, 29 probes. It's, yeah. like, some stupid war Beastie. prison play. <laughs> and I think something like that has more chance to beat Serral than if, you know... I agree. I agree. You combine like Earth, Wind, Fire, and Heart, you get SOS. That's who you summon. They did that at BlizzCon. Do you want to know what the results were? It was bad, my dude. Yeah, but this was before. This was before. This was before the robo things. To be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm talking. We about basically, now. just gave SOS like an AK-47. Okay, and now they're. What did he have before that? He had a fucking fork. Well, he, yeah, he, had, a failed, he had a the most terrible cannon rush I've seen in my yeah. life. Yeah, he had a fork. With, all the prongs were fucking bent, and he had a fork. Okay. <laughs> Robo Builder knew now. Can't guys, pull it out then, though. This Protoss hate train. Listen, 
to my young Protoss <laughs> players in the chat, I'm out here. I'm trying. Okay, I didn't see when Dan got converted, but it happened over last night or something. I'm here. You got Beastie Cutie the Smile sitting back seventy thousand dollars in the bank as of today, and he's just like, <laughs> Protoss all ends. Who's your Protoss player? He's like Showtime, probably. Who never all ends? By the way, anyways. <laughs> yeah. But what if he did? What if he did? I, that's, I, he did. that's why yeah. it's more too. <laughs> Well, then I'd ask to see who's on his account playing for him, but yeah. Mm. All right, well, this is fun. Um, I guess one of the only things I would leave off with is in case people didn't see it, what would be your single favorite game? I think one of the ones that immediately leaps out is the Knee Bly base trade. Game three was a big deal. Uh, you can go back and watch that VOD. I think someone had that on Reddit. Pretty cool game. I still haven't watched it. <laughs> yeah, that's your kind I'm of saving game, it. Man. It's crazy. It's chaotic. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen that series yet, um, but I keep hearing, so I'm, I'll definitely watch it this week. Um, for me, so far, my favorite game has been Serral vs. Time on King's Cove, okay. their game number four, where it got to the supreme light game of normal units, right? Like ghosts and liberators and stuff like that against, well, whatever the Zerg wants to do. And normally what you see is the turtle broodlord into, you know, broodlord corruptor, like there's some infestors and vipers in there and queens with lots of spores and turns into nuke pushes. Like that's what we've seen a lot from innovation, from Maru, from TY, stuff like that. But, or, sorry, when they play against Zergs like Scarlet or we've seen Serral do that, whatever. Uh, but this game, uh, Serral went for like Ling Bane Hydra Ultra for a long time and was using double Nidus's and just hitting edges. And it was just just a beautiful game yeah. it was so different from other late game zergs and the way that zerg has been handled in the late game and it just it struck a chord with me i thought it was beautiful it was an amazing game anybody else beast is your favorite protoss game that you uh, <laughs> try to promote here <laughs> <laughs> nothing bud okay we'll get to the max max build later <laughs> we, I think we actually a cool will series not necessarily a game but a cool series was goblin petit drogo because apparently he beat him with one base robo and then two games he beat him with proxy void rays so that's damn <laughs> i'm heard. on to you bc cutie okay i saw the upset tweets but <laughs> i heard there was a legendary desk smash i don't know Ooh. if you got if you I if mean, you really quiet, you can hear it like rippling around the world still. Who did it from that series? Drogo. I'm guessing Drogo. Oh, yeah. Very emotional. Yeah. I, I mean, like, Juan messaged imagine? me at like 4 a.m. saying like I think a bomb went off. It was Drogo <laughs> losing a series. And he like, played great, by the way. He he had a great tournament as well. His, his games where he was winning and doing well it was really cool. Uh, Petit Drogo, by the way, one of my favorite streamers. He's been streaming more lately as well, and it's just very fun to watch. He's kind of a Harsom S streamer in that he will talk through his thought process. But he still has that very young pro gamer mentality, which is my favorite. He'll like dance a probe to block a nexus. It'll get picked off, and he goes, "Well, we lost, but uh, we'll try to sell it." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my god, okay." <laughs> very fun. It's a good yeah. time to be a Starcraft fan. So that's WCS Spring. Um, we're already moving into Challenger, by the way. That's coming up in the next couple of weeks, and we'll be moving on to the next WCS stop in no time at all. They're going back to Kiev. Uh, which looks to be in good hands. And I imagine we'll have that knockout bracket. It was a big success and a big hit. Everyone seems to be pretty happy and high on it, and it's great. Shout out to the commentators, by the way. We've got some of them in the chat. Uh, Maynard did a great job. Roddy is fast asleep, probably uh, shirtless somewhere, in a bed somewhere. Oh, actually, he's in Los Angeles now that I think about it. So he's asleep at 7 p.m. That'd be weird, but it's Roddy. So <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, they all did great. And Todd coming out of his quiet little Warcraft 3 hole. And now he's in Vegas gambling his money away on uh, poker. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. We're all doing well. So on to the... That's it for our big topics. We're going to move into a roundtable discussion. And we're going to really test the theory on this. Oh, no. Sorry. We got, we got, before we get to that, we're going to do clips of the week. Now, I want to see if we maintain our tradition of one <laughs> quietly awkward one that nobody quite knows if it's supposed to be funny or not. And then, like, two or three very funny ones. Let's see if we can get there. Getting things ready. One second. Get it ready. Okay. For this clip, 
You're watching one thing and one thing only. Rainer's hands. That's Lambo, right? Yep, that's Lambo. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. To be fair, these Zerk players all look the same. But who's that, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> that's so Italian. It's beautiful. These guys are Next pretty Next up, we have a special. Look at this shit, Beastie Cutie. <laughs> One unit here. Oh my both lord! Both sides of the map for the deciding map here. That's this is going to get intense. He's pulled. Oh, this is game that's five. Stop this first SCV or so. Nice. Yeah, well, that's crazy. Yeah. That he did this game five. That is ballsy. Is he for this position? I think Neeb is. Do you imagine oh, trying to life on the line? This is so dangerous. Stuck. He's got the stuck! Ben, no shut the fuck up! The Zard stuck! But that's not two gateway units, it's just a one now. Special That might have actually been the game losing the moment. That's the insane. Safe here. Oh. Special gets forward, he gets the bunker. Oh no! That's it! Special has done it! He's got wow. his first WCS grand final of Damn. Wow. And guess what? Neeb and Special aren't friends anymore after that. <laughs> no. It's face Facebook removed for sure. <laughs> yeah. Creature Armani. This one's brought to us by Rifkin. And pylons probably anyways. So they're just kind of stuck out here. They can't make it through the front doors. <gasps> the change I hold position out of Armani! Oh, that's so sick! Creature Sprite, like, where's my reinforcements? Why you know, it's funny about that clip. What's those Archons wouldn't have came in anyways. Yeah. So we're basically yeah. stopping yeah. only, like, five Zealots from coming oh. in. So it literally oh changes nothing. Oh, my God, the five but Zealots, though! Guy, it actually yeah. saves his five Zealots, yeah, which is kind of... Their and he's getting mud all over like his face. Like the Protoss blocked himself. If we're now, working at anything here. He is having some trouble dealing with the Immortals. Uh, it took a lot longer to clean up than he wanted, thanks to the Sim City. But those Changelings still have not been noticed. The moves. He didn't kill them. 1G. GG. Oh my god. Good. This is pretty great, though. You guys, you guys haven't seen this clip yet. This is fucking hilarious. These are our two best clips of the week, and they just happened yeah. today. You ready? We had a lot of tactical nuking going on. Here's one of the first ones. Dude, who's making all these tanks? We actually don't have an army, do we? So we are. Click it. Zero. Unless. Zero W. Unless. Zero hype. Oh Neuro. my god! Oh. <laughs> it actually happened. That happened. Yeah. Ta tactical, tactical. We're too far ahead. We can afford it. Stop hitting all units. Did he actually just middle. get up and dance? Yes. yes. Yeah. This was, was live. Dude, who's making Wait, all these? I'm confused. These... Is this a replay? Like, what, is he playing this? <laughs> no, no. There was six of us on one team versus Chip Rising and M Canning on the other in our combo. So we were oh literally like sabotaging thought, each other. I thought he was playing. I was like, wow. He was. He's very clumsy. He controlled yeah, that. Basically, because that that's the sickest. If he's just playing by himself, he's like, oh, this yeah, is yeah. gonna. Hit. Like, it's time <laughs> to dance. It's all of us. Cover me, boys. I'm going in. Here we the go. Little mine drop, dude. Can I control it? Is it, is it triggering you? Again? Are you upset? Dude, I am a little bit upset. Yeah. Can you not hear it? Yeah, yeah. Dude, <laughs> cover me. I'm gonna nuke. I'm gonna look out for you. Here you go. Take a look. It's a pretty oh, we got T2. We got T2. We got T2. Oh my God. Of course they're not macroing. Whole army's behind you. Wait, who's controlling oh. that down there? <laughs> no. Later. Uh oh. Oh. What? Oh my God, dude! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. There is a. I love that it was an uncloaked ghost. Like, that was me, dude. And the ghost gets out. That was great. Dude, Special you've done operations. Two amazing things this game. I'm so proud. Of you. Oh, that was Thanks. so funny. Whoa. Now I'm gonna Make go sure back to the Make sure you guys get Taurus up everywhere. That whole event was just. We all did, did, agreed to just be in the same voice chat the whole time and talk shit. <laughs> you know? uh, it was. It was actually really fun, but. It, we we were laughing too because a couple times the Twitch rival studio would be like let's let's voice in on the guys and we were talking about powdered poop and <laughs> um, Jason was talking about how he only shits in the shower and he needs to, like take a quick break to go do that it was all kinds of weird stuff so then they're like let's not listen to them actually <laughs> what's so unfortunate about the fact that they're muted is that you know mainstream can't hear this.
All right. Well, actually, I was Is watching the Europe mainstream a lot. They, no, they actually no. don't go to the player com as much. It's mostly just them talking. They hear about players cramming shit up there. Oh, okay. <laughs> They do do probably some listen but it's yeah. Probably Let's listen in, guys. <laughs> Let's hear what the players are saying now. <laughs> well, the male G-spot is up there, so I guess I'll be cramming far enough. <laughs> you know what? Let's leave them to it. <laughs> Back to the desk. Back to the desk. <laughs> What's so unfortunate about the fact that they're muted is that the you know, mainstream can't hear this. Dude, Jason, if yeah, you ever get a so chance, funny. he's such a funny Terran streamer. He's one of my, my favorites. So he's just a very dry sense of humor funny guy but he we were all just like sitting there waiting for the next game to go and he's just like he said <laughs> he said do you ever put your hand below yourself when you're pooping to catch the poop so it doesn't make a splash <laughs> we were all, just kind of quietly heard him say that and we're all like what'd you say and he's like oh yeah you don't want it to splash because then people can hear that you're pooping and you're like and that was it <laughs> jesus christ and we kind of riffed from there and that was the no, whole conversation you... You make a toilet paper bridge underneath. He said that on. too. He said that's what it was for. Yeah. A lot of poop talk on uh, that episode of Twitch Rivals, at least for the NA side. I'm sure the European side was discussing you guys are great. Like, geopolitical statuses and Brexit and stuff <laughs> like that. But, <laughs> Anyways, speaking of really deep, thoughtful things, we're going to get back into a discussion that we tried to have last week. And I'm going to turn it over to BCQD here in a second because I thought he did a great job of talking... Uh, introducing this, but before he does, I want to give a quick. Basically, you did such a good job describing it, and I was so inspired that in the week between our two episodes, I've been doing the build, and I <laughs> yes. shit you not, it had like I, uh, you know, I'm a fifty-fifty guy. Like I don't win vast majority, but it is like eighty-five percent win percentage. It's really good, and what I like about it is a lot of times when someone's like, "Have you tried this new build?" Usually, at least for me, you like lose the first 15 games. Because when you're figuring it out, shit just hits the mm. fan. You're like, I don't know what's happening here, or, or whatever. This build is so smooth and so insanely just like you're probably just ahead. Like, if they proxy, then I don't take the Nexus, and I double gas, and I have a gateway back at home, and I go and attack, and they're in this weird spot because they're getting Zealot pressured, and their expansion's not going on down on the right time. They high ground CC, they're in trouble there. If the if I've had a zealot kill a command center today, like the guy just forgot to cancel, so it just died. It is <laughs> insane. So Beastie Cutie, if you don't mind, you can give the glib version or whatever. You can go as deep as you want. We're gonna try okay, to have so, we're gonna do it again. So uh Max Max destroyed the internet last time. So we'll go from from the beginning for you know people that maybe yeah. don't know what it is. So Max Pax build or Max Pax first is a, apparently I, I have not 100% confirmed this is a 14 year old kid that plays for us. I heard he's plays nine years six old. K. Might be. Yeah. Um, he plays on EU. He's around six K MMR, and he the first time I met him, he you know I scatter across the map, and I'm like, oh cool, there's a you know there's a pylon. Oh, he's expanding. Okay, so I go back and I expand myself. Because I saw the Nexus, and I didn't even pay attention that there's no gateway in the main base, because where else would the gateway be? <laughs> so I'm expanding, but the Reaper goes across the map, and there's Zealot in my base. And I'm like, uh, like, how's this possible? Like, the Zealot's not supposed to arrive yet. So I go <laughs> back, I'm defending the Zealot, there's another Zealot. And at this point, I'm very confused, and I look at his base, and I realize that there's no gateway in his base, but he's still expanding. So then I, as I'm defending, the stalker arrives, and I'm like, what, what, is, what is this guy doing? So anyway, I lose the game, I leave, and I look at his build, and it, the build is basically probe in the main base, you keep probing up, and then you proxy the second pylon, and you send a probe straight away across the map, you proxy the second pylon, and basically you proxy your first gateway. So what you do after that is you expand behind it, so it's a normal gateway expand, except your gateways across the map. Then you go into your cyber core, except the difference is, even though you're fast expanding, you, if the Terran expands on their side, you cancel their command center with the Zealots and followed up by Stalkers. And if they expand on low ground, that, that's it. Like, it's very hard to defend it. There are some ways to do it, but you kind of have to gamble quite a bit if the Protoss is actually doing that, in my opinion. And overall, it's just a great build, and most of the people that you'll meet when you do it will not... Like, no one will realize that there's no gateway. Because the moment they see expand, they're like, oh, it's a fast expand. That's it. 
and uh, you can get a lot of cheap wins. But uh, I think other than cheap wins, it can transition quite well if you know how to do it. And uh, it's just, uh, just a lot of fun. It's a very overall. good build. Yeah. Um, so one thing I wanted to, that we also mentioned previous time is a lot of people have this concern like, oh, you can just build a bunker. You can't. It, that's not how that works. This is, uh, a lot of people have also told me, uh, you know, I've watched Special versus SOS. This build is shit. He obviously defends it easily. The build that SOS did against Special is a completely different build. It's a gateway in the main, and then you proxy your second gateway. So whatever is arriving at the Terran base is much later. So you have much more time to react. And also the Protoss' expand is much later because it's off of two gateways. You're more committed to it. And the best part about this build is because you're still fast expanding. So Terran can't just be like, oh, I'll just cancel it, remake it in the main base because your Nexus is pretty much finishing at that point. Um, so the bunker, even if you make it instantly, is not in time because your first Zealot is just mm -hmm. extremely like fast uh, at the enemy. And then even if you somehow get a bunker, you can literally run past by it with a stalker because there's just a Reaper in it. And then you kill the SC building the CC anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Now there are the, like the meta is already evolving and it's shifting. So you like the response to it that works pretty well is to go into concussive shells straight away. And you basically, you know, go marauders and you can kill the stalkers, kill the zealots, whatever. But what I started doing when I, you know, see that the more you play it, people kind of know the response. So what you start doing is you start proxying yourself with your own gateway. And when they see that there's no gate, but you're expanding, they go into Marauders, and then you go into a normal game, and they have this, like, two racks Marauder build that's just complete trash, and it's just really, really bad. So you can go, like, into Oracles, and you just kill their SCVs and stuff. Um, so there's a lot of, like, mind games and stuff going around it. And if the Terran builds the, uh, the CC in their main base, then they're still behind because your Nexus in the, is on the spot. So you actually didn't, like, really sacrifice anything. And they're going to have a hard time taking the natural. And the last thing, which, again, a lot of people brought up, you can just send the Reaper across the map and wall off in the main and what is Protoss going to do? Uh, well, you can just build a shield battery in your mineral line and recall a stalker. Or you don't even need a shield battery. You can just recall the stalker and that's it. Yep. And then you get into a situation where your natural nexus is done. The Terran is on one base. And then they're like, do I go down the ramp? Because... The Protoss can do anything. You can actually, I've won games with, if they expand in the main base, I just go four gate. And the moment they go down, you just four gate them with Stalker Zealot and they just die. You can go into Robo. You can literally do anything after that. It's, it's completely up to you. Now, I don't think the build is OP. I don't think this is something you should do like every single game, unless you're playing ladder, I guess. Uh, but, you know, people are not going to do this in tournament and... Like every game, it turns going to be like, oh my god, this is. It's not like a two racks against Zerg, right? Where it has a. I've never seen this build lose meme. But I think this is something you can definitely mix up in your uh, build orders when you play. And I think it's quite, quite good. But we'll see. And so I, I watched a whole bunch of the build and thought about it a lot. And I was holding my breath last night in GSL that we'd see it in our PVT, but we didn't, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I, I love it. It's like the, uh, and I love Jeff that you did it a whole bunch and had yeah. a high win rate with it. The thing that's really cool about it is how early it is and it's something this early that's still economical, right? If it's super early and it's an all in, the meta can shift around it real quick and destroy it. And it will just be like maybe a pocket all in that you use occasionally. But because it's part of a macro build, it's like, Stuff like that has such potential to shift the metagame around, which is just, it's so exciting because that'll force a ton of evolution. And it feels like if that's, if it's seen to its full conclusion, that it could change things like scout patterns completely. You know, it, like, it's just, it, what a cool build. Or it's, it's yeah, fun I mean, in the meta because a lot of Terrans don't SCV scout and they just naturally low ground CC expand, but now they're going to have to start thinking about it. I also yeah, like it yeah. because one of the things that, um, Beastie explained last time, this is his second time explaining it, 
uh, was that this kid just plays a different build in all three matchups. He doesn't really copy what the pros are doing, or he probably doesn't even watch that much esports, or if he does, he just has his own ideas. And this is a different riff. Like this, we've seen elements of this, we've seen components of this, but one of my favorite things about StarCraft, and this happens with, has happened in Brood War forever, since the beginning of time, is that years down the road, people just are like, what if I just try this other thing? And for whatever reason, a lot of people didn't think of that, or if they did, they didn't get to show it off, or whatever. But mm. because this happened to Beastie, and Beastie talked about it, and streamed it, and showed it off, I, I've seen other people try it. Now I see Terrans reacting to it, because they they're having it done to them by people on the ladder as well. <laughs> so yeah. it started a trend. It's really cool. So yeah. you basically nerfed Max Pax. It's you open, yeah, I actually, I, yeah. I actually meet him quite often on the ladder, and he's like, uh, "Because of you, I can't proxy Terrans anymore." But we're playing a <laughs> PVT, and I'm like, "I'm sorry, but at least you're now you're a legend." And he's like, "Yeah, true." So we're playing the game, and <laughs> oh, I scout God. for I scout for Max Pax gateway around the around the around the my third or fourth base. There's none. And then I go to expand it, he proxy gateway in my natural, like behind the mineral line. I'm like, this is <laughs> The madman. He just does like a smiley face. Um, but I think, you know, like I, when I made the video and like the reaction, obviously it's like over the top, but I, I was genuinely excited about this because like when I saw it, it, it literally took me like, there's a, you know, a video of me where I'm like, like, oh my God, you know, like that moment of realization when you just saw something great. And again, it's not about the build itself. It's about how someone, you know, nine years into the game can have a completely different way of thinking. And it's so simple, right? Like just proxy the first gateway and no one's ever done it into expand. You know, there's probably someone, I'm gold league. I saw this five times. I'm sure you did uh, <laughs> like a year ago, right? And you beat it every time, but that to me is super exciting because that yeah. just proves the game's not figured out yet. It can transition into anything. And like you said, it will change the, the patterns people play and scout if it gets used. And I think it, it will get used. A lot of Terrans at high level, like super high level, don't SCV scout, like you guys mentioned. And they will have to scout once again. And they will have to kind of choose best way to respond to it, but not fall behind at the same time. Because it's not about, oh, just cancel your CC. You're still behind. You right. have to choose a way to do something about it and be even or ahead. And that, I think, is a pretty difficult thing. Well, straight up, even just them having the Reaper back at home and walling in and defending is a form of a Terran being uncomfortable. They're very used to, on most of these maps, having the Reaper in and around your base to have some idea of where the game's heading. But this opener... A, it's a different pace, because it's a really fast Nexus, by the way, but B, it shuts them down. So if they do defend it, it's very hard for them to get information, and then if they, you know, if it's not shut down, they're in trouble. Um, like I said, in all my games, the, the most fun part about it for me is that I haven't ran into something they're doing where I just die. Because that's not a fun build mm. for me. That's uh, mm. You have that feeling as a Protoss streamer all the time. You're like, wow, this guy, I can't believe he saw that coming. That's incredible. And then you just die. Um, but with this opener, it's so flexible and it goes into so, so many different directions. It's still just mostly a macro opening with a very aggressive lean that has a, you know, a safe element to it that oftentimes Terrans are in trouble. I have lost, like I said, but it was, I, I didn't lose because I felt like the build lost me. It was more my execution. So that was, it's a good feeling to have a safe opening like that. But I also agree that if you just did, if I got the same guy three times in a row and tried to do it three times in a row. Yeah, but that, yeah. that's when you do it twice, and then the third time you proxy yourself. Yeah. And then he blind counters it, and he gets behind again. Um, I look at it like the Terran 1 Barracks Proxy Reaper. Like, that's been a thing for, like, two years, right? Where you proxy a Reaper. Sometimes you proxy a factory, but most of the time you just make it at home, and that's it. Is mm. that build broken? No, but Protoss needs to react to it, right? Like, right. you're going to lose some probes if you don't react properly. And I think um, you should never disregard the, you know, the human effect of people might just mess up their SCV micro. You know, they might lose an SCV. The Reaper might be like a little bit off. They might forget supply people because you're putting the pressure so early. And especially at lower leagues, people are not going to play perfect. You know, their depot might be up or, or down. Your Zella goes in, you know, you delay the factory, delay the CC. So, 
I don't know. I think it's it's just really cool. And I've also seen he has like uh, ways to transition out of it, like his own ways. If he cancels a CC or does some kind of damage to the Terran, he goes into Stargate. I'm assuming because then Terran needs to counterattack. So then the Phoenix can, you know, deny whatever drop the, the Terran is doing or Liberator or Banshee. But if he doesn't go well, like if Terran defends it pretty well, he goes into Robo and just goes for like another big bust or something like that that Terran won't expect. But there's just so many transitions you can do out of it is, I think, what makes it cool. And again, it's just another opening and build you can do that Terrans need to learn how more, to deal with. Are you more excited for the build or the player? I'm curious. Um, I, He's I more guess, excited for the build is what that um means. <laughs> I, guess, I guess both. No, I'm excited about the player as well. Uh, I feel like I'm more excited about the player than the, than the build. Like the uh, fact like, that he came up with that build is cool, but the fact it's it's like a different thing. It's so vastly removed from the pro scene that it's extremely interesting, right? Like proxying one gate is cool, but I'd like to see where it continues, where it goes yeah. further. The thing is, he's already changing his build because I met him with Terran. He's changing the he transition. Yeah, but he the thing <laughs> is, he's not falling behind. He actually went from like 6K to 5.9K. And the last time I met him, he was like 6.1 plus. So even though everyone knows him, he's still going up the ranks because he's mm. probably, you know, just mind gaming people now. Um, I am excited about the build, but I think I'm, um, and I'm excited about, you know, the, the kid that's obviously thinking different and that's all cool. But I think I'm mostly excited that the game is still evolving and not in a small way where it's like, I'm going to go Reaper, Reaper, Marine. It's like, this is a, a big kind of yeah. play style and, and build order change. It's not small at all. And I think that's what I'm most excited. Because it's like, if you think about it, about Terran or Zerg, what are those races missing that no one's figured out yet? That's completely viable, but mm. no one's doing it yet. Yeah, and I, I think we will see those eventually. It's hard, though, to get builds like this out there. Because like Jeff pointed out, how this got out is you played a 14-year-old that probably doesn't watch that many pro games that actually has a lot of skill and talent and then made a video about it because you realized, and here's the thing, if it was another player of your level that played it, they don't have a big YouTube channel and they're not open-minded like you, a random player of GM status yeah. as a former pro, right? So it's like very hard to find this stuff, especially because to get as good as this Max Packs kid is, you so oftentimes have to emulate what pros are doing to kind of build yeah. your skill up. You have to really heavily do it, which gets you locked into certain mind frames because you're trying to, you know, you're trying to get better and you're like, okay, what do they do in this situation? What do they do in this situation? You're not thinking for yourself as much, but apparently this kid obviously has like a lot of talent and is able to kind of figure this stuff out. It's, it's, it's hard to find stuff like this and it's, it's super rare. So definitely very exciting about, like his future, but how often are we going to get players like this that, that yeah. pop it up? And that's Max why I'm so excited for the player, right? Yeah. Well, as a 14 year old Russian, unless he hits real pro level, would we have ever seen this if he hadn't used it against BC Cutie? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, who knows I if, mean, he even, if he even wants to be a pro gamer or what his aspirations yeah, are, you, don't you know? know? Yeah. Many, like, many maybe his aspirations are just like... to play louder. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, many people ask me, like, oh, why don't you coach him? Uh, and I, at first I was like, mm, maybe I should. But then I'm like, no, I shouldn't. Because he's doing his own thing, and he should continue to do his own thing. I shouldn't be yeah. like, actually, you can improve this. Because he obviously thinks the game differently than I do, and than all of us do. So why would I tell him what to do if he's already on a very good path? Like, if mm -hmm. he can do that at 14, like, change the way, at least for, for me personally, think about the game, then... Why not just give him time to just do his own thing? Um, and I, I think that's really, really, really cool. Very I cool. agree. Don't taint him with whatever yeah. you've got going on. Wow. Yeah, you're you're kind of like Star Trek or something where, you know, you found this new planet and you're like, oh, no, we need to let them grow up how they grow up. We yeah, can't just exactly. give them warp technology. Give it a couple <laughs> more years and stuff. Yeah. But, Jeff, another build for you yeah. in PvP. This is a, another Max Pack special, as I like to call it. You know the uh, double proxy robo yeah. in PvP, like the all-in? So you go like mm -hmm. adept into double proxy robo? Do that in PvP. Maybe it sounds stupid. The first time I played against it, it killed me. Then I tried it four times and I won every game. 
you just rally mortals into the Protoss. Yeah. And that's it. Even if they go Phoenix, they lift them up and they kill like one immortal, then two more show up and eventually just brute force in. And there's there's no prism with that one? Wait. Well, if, if they have Stargate, no. If they don't have Stargate, then uh, you make a prism. How do you afford all this? Because you open two gate. What do you open? Two gate, gate, one gate. No, no, one, one gate. Yeah. Trust me, it sounds him? stupid. It sounds it sounds like a madman. <laughs> when when I actually scouted it, and I was like, "What is he doing?" And then I died. And I went to target. <laughs> well, the good thing about this I'm one fine. is, I think it's this one's different, so it does have harder counters because I now know who to blame for this. But I already faced this build a whole bunch. But it was the <laughs> NA version, mm -hmm. so again, like the Benny Hill music's playing. That guy is. Uh, how do I family friendly describe an NA Protoss player? I don't know how to do that, but it's just uh, he's got the two Running robos backwards, naked through a cornfield. Yeah, well, that's that's my latter experience. So they're putting it where they think is clever, but that's of course exactly where my hallucination flies directly over the top of it. And I'm like, <laughs> you got two robos, and he's like, hey, uh, and now it takes like an hour and a half for him to come out, and I've got my fourth and fifth Phoenix coming out. And I guess the difference between me and a lot of the European players you were encountering in BCQ is I can warp in a century. So I warp in a century, then they sit at the bottom of the ramp and I pick up three immortals <laughs> and kill them. They usually start talking about my family and incurable disease and fire and stuff like that, and then they just kind of leave the game. So I, I'm not as big of a fan as that one. I could see why it would work, of course, but on the NA server, like what you just did is you handed me a knife, but I've been living in the forest with like two knives and no clothes for like six years now. So you're like, so I'm like, what am I supposed to do with that, man? I've got this, uh, I've crafted <laughs> knives, bro. I I fight the knives. Anyways. Um, oh my God. Someday this is how guys I feel every time I get cannon rushed on an A. What's that? Or every time I get cannon rushed on Korea, I, I, I ask myself, like, do you know where I've come from? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I've seen. Like, you cannot even imagine what I've seen. And this guy's yeah. building, like, one pylon and one cannon. I'm like, nah. I just kill it, <laughs> like, so easily. Exactly it's right. It's amazing coming from NA. Yep. I, like I said, I describe it as running backwards naked through a cornfield. <laughs> and then every once in a while, you flip it around. You run forwards naked through a cornfield. Uh, it's all very confusing. <laughs> It's been a good meme though. My channel's enjoyed it because some of the shit that just starts showing up, like I'll have, like again, like I got double robo and I think I held it off one game, but then DTs killed me like three minutes later. And I'm like, what? It's like, what's this guy doing? Like, he's not even flipping coins. He's just jumping off a building, hoping there's a trampoline down there. Like, I don't know. There we go. Like, uh... you know what my favorite shit. Speaking on that is, is when someone opens like phoenixes, you know, and then random DTs come in after. Yeah, I'm like. Why the fuck would you do that? You know I have to build spores to deal with your phoenix. Oh, your Zerg? Okay, now I don't know. Yeah. I thought you were talking about Protoss. People Protoss do this shit like, all the time. Protoss, oh, okay. yeah, Protoss too. But versus Zerg, it's even dumber because you already have the spores. And they just try to snipe the spores with the DTs. I'm like, you could have just done this first. It would have been way better. <laughs> Fucking idiots. I've, I've had a game recently where a guy shades in, sees that I'm going Robo. Robo finishes. He opens Robo as well. He makes a prism and then DTs. Like, that's when he starts DTs. <laughs> and then warps four. He took super fast guys natural. Warps four more. And I'm like, why would you ever do that? Like, you saw I have Robo from the beginning of the game. Yeah. And because I made, like, an observer. Because it's, like, one of those things. You know that he knows you have robots. It's like, why would I need observer for DTs? Like, like who would do that, right? And I send the observer across the map, and I see DT shrine, and then I just see four DTs in each base killing my probes, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let why? me tell you why. Yeah, why that's what happened. This? You and he. Guess what? Because of that game, he's gonna do it for the rest of his life. So, <laughs> one, of, one of my friends I play Warhammer with. This is not gonna make sense. I'll try to describe this as best I can, as quickly as I can. But there's a thing called a feel no pain. So after you fail a save, some units have another dice roll you can make to see if the damage actually goes through. Um, so for this guy, he has six up. So he has to on a d6. He needs to roll a six for the damage to be negated. But sometimes an attack does two or three damage. So literally, if it goes through, he needs to roll triple sixes and nothing else it can't be two sixes and a one that means the guy dies right one of the first games against this guy i'm like all right you got three damage he's like i'm gonna roll my field of pains we're like all triple sixes and i'm like you fucking gotta be kidding me <laughs> guess what since then i've played probably 30 games with my my good friend jesse here who works at twitch 
And in every game, there's a feel no pain. And in every one of them, he's like, well, all I have to do is make 9 out of 10 here. And I'm like, don't. Don't fucking do it. He never does it again. Never. And he never will. <laughs> He'll never roll those sixes ever again. But he rolls every single time. And, and I'm like, this is the North American ladder. Well, guys, like, yeah, it's okay. yeah, it's true. Yeah. I used to play Brood War. I watched this guy named G5. He loaded up three shuttles with uh, 12 Dark Templar. And he dropped them on the Terran base. And it worked. So ever since then. <laughs> he's he's S rank, by the way, right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I need to hear about the state of StarCraft Remaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. G5's fantastic. He's often in the chat. Um, okay, well, that's the Max Packs build. It, the other part of the discussion is in our previous episodes, which is live on Artosis TV, um, or you can see it uh, through the VODs. It's all kinds of places. The usual places to see our previous episodes. Last one. So let's go to the next topic. It's once again Mr. Beast and Cutie with another bone to pick. And this time he has... it's. So let me be clear, this is him talking about Protoss Cheese, but he's rebalanced this discussion to Zerg balance. What would it be like if Zerg played like it does in Brood War? So I'm interested to see how you wrote this into Protoss, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Huh? <laughs> what would it look like if Zerg was played similar to Brood War with less tech and more units? So whether you're aware of it or not, Cobra's under the impression oh, that you want um, this topic. So. Okay, so... So I've been playing Brood War recently, and it's kind of, you know, I used to play Brood War like years and years ago, but it's it's so sad to see StarCraft II Zerg and then see what Zerg was in yes. Brood War. Yes, it is I actually, feel you. Like, I was, I, I'm not joking. I was actually sad. Like, I played it, and I was like, All right. this is actually sad. How do we go from this to this garbage we have now? I agree. I I'm excited for wait, your wait, wait, wait. discussion Are you, are you saying this? StarCraft II Zerg is worse? Yes, is what he's saying. I'm yeah, excited for your talk about this. No, not that balance. No, no, no balance, no design. Just the, the way is there the way the Hang game on. Plays, yeah. Before you proceed, Ravi, if you're listening, don't tweet about this one, okay? <laughs> Shitstorm's not worth it. Go ahead, Beast. Like, <laughs> like, I, it, Zerg in StarCraft 2 is so uninspiring. I actually started playing Zerg in StarCraft 2, and I switched because it was boring. Like, you're when just you're taking everybody's Brood... punches all fucking game. Like, that's basically Zerg. You're just oh, getting like, yeah, fucking like, what, fucked what all happened? game. Yeah. Jake, like, what happened? when have you hey. taken a punch in a game of StarCraft 2 ever? I mean, I try not to, but it's, I, I get punched every game. He's emulating walls. Brood War Zerg. I'm trying, uh, motherfucker. I'm trying to get away from that. Okay, so <laughs> it, it's just when you play Zerg or in Brood War, or you, when you play against Zerg, when he starts attacking you, like you see this, it's a swarm of units, right? It's Zerglings and it's Hydras and it's Lurkers and it, the units are burrowing, the units are flying. It, it feels like, a, like an actual swarm. And when you play Brood War, and I'm sure the top players, you know, can feel out this way better in the game, but even if you kill 30 Hydras, you still see like units trickling in and you're like, oh my God, does he have more? Does he have the Vanguard? Ultra is going to come out. And you're kind of like scared, like from the Zerg, from the Zerg Swarm. It's StarCraft 2. It's <laughs> Zerg so, I don't know. It, it's completely you deal different with, like, play style. 10 Hydras and you're like, well, I guess I can push and kill him now. <laughs> like it, it, but, It's just that it's snowball, right? Yeah, but yeah, but it's also just the way units move and, and just everything. And mm. I'm sure this is a lot to do with pathing in Brood War and the way it works. But StarCraft 2 Zerg is just I, I, I think really bad from from gameplay point of view. I'll be to the Brood slight War, voice, voice of dissension, except for the reason I played Zerg in Brood War was because they look like Terranids. But not even just Terranids. Ultralists look like Carnifexes, and they were really, really cool to young me. Ultras in StarCraft II have always been hot, hot garbage. And I'm not just talking about their balance. I mean, literally, their feet are like kind of adorable panda bear feet. They kind of, <laughs> they're kind of stumpy, and they come walking in, and they're like, it's like this really dumb animation then they to rub salt in the wound they come out with that animation hilariously of the viking going to battle with the ultra but just the way they film <laughs> that is fucking incredible the ultra is like stomping through the city it's this gargantuan battering ram monster of a thing it looks so cool then in game you get it you ever seen a zerg so stupid that they nightest ultras into somebody's base 
I mean, it's not, it's not that bad, you right? Guys, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, it's not bad if they just A move it, because then it's just indiscriminately attacking things. But then a Marine, like, behind a depot, is like... Brr, brr, and the old just like... Argh, argh, and just, like, stamps around. Argh. It's so stupid. Ultras in StarCraft Two are the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. And they've come up yeah. with ideas. They had them... Guys, this is some of the stuff that died on the, the chopping room floor, but they wanted Ultras to burrow... <laughs> headbutt things and launch them into the air they wanted to make ultras a part of a Cirque du Soleil fucking act that's how far off ultras are in Starcraft 2 they literally wanted them to headbutt shit from underground they were combining tremors with a French acrobatic act they were they were basically making ultras into a new Barak from Heroes of yeah. the Storm actually it's in co-op now so they got used to it and it was actually supposed to stun units when it emerges. I remember oh, yeah, reading that. I was yeah. like, <laughs> you know, wasn't this during the time too that they wanted Bane Links to move underground? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking great. They were they were on a they were on the right track. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Imagine Burrow Bane Links and charging underground ultras. That would have been sick. We're not Burrow even there yet, boys. You're just edging right what? now. You want to get fully over? They were gonna give Protoss a thing that could literally replicate something else. So I could have siege tanks. Oh, oh yeah, that was sick. Get a battle cruisers. Wait, could you replicate an SCV and build a command center? I, I don't so. remember if this was a thing. Uh, oh, so. I can't remember. That would I remember sick. it was expensive, but disruptor was supposed to be that, right? Well, hang on though. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Let's get back on topic though, Zerg. So okay. Dan, okay. So, so one thing I want to make sure, like I've seen some people in the chatter, like. Uh, great way to alienate your viewers i'm not talking about balance i'm not talking about uh, it's about like, the way it whatever. plays it's about the way you play the zerg it yeah. doesn't feel like a zerg anymore okay. and That's the if problem. you make fun of zerg you're alienating one third of your viewers but you're actually bringing yourself closer to two thirds of the other so it's actually hey, it's a net win I, to be I, honest I, with you. I know what i'm doing yeah exactly know what i'm doing yeah so, been in the oh. business Oh, hold on, though, because I always thought that they got Zerg closer to what they envisioned in StarCraft II because it kind of grows on the map and it becomes overwhelming eventually. Whereas in StarCraft One, in Zerg vs. Protoss, sure, you have just ludicrous amounts of Hydroling for most of the game until it ends. But in like a tight match of Zerg vs. Zerg, you have almost no units against almost no units. And then in a tight match of Zerg vs. Terran, unless you get to super, super late game where you're both maxing out, you don't really have the Storms. It's very technical smaller armies with lots of micro and stuff so well, God, I don't dan's, dan's shitting on your division right now can we talk think about, about the campaign? starcraft <laughs> no, 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 I, I don't know think about starcraft 2 late games sir like are even mid to like mid games like it's just you defending your economy almost the entire time and spreading creep and basically never attacking off of creep ever like yeah. there are ways to play it aggressively don't get me wrong i am the aggressive king for like early game but it's not like a viable thing to do at the top level. Nobody like me is going to be a champion. Uh, yes. Possibly Rainer, but Rainer doesn't even really play like that either. So like it, it's just different. It's not really swarmy. Rainer's probably the closest thing to to like the swarmy Zerg yeah. you can get. But most Zergs are just going to sit there, wait for you to come onto creep, and then attack you. Uh, they're going to build spores and spines and broodlords, and they're just going to sit there, right? Like that's how a lot of Zerg players play. I I think it's tricky with StarCraft 2 because uh, StarCraft 1 Zerg units are better than StarCraft 2 Zerg units, like all of them. Um, they're just, they're stronger. Like the Zergling got really nerfed going into StarCraft 2. Uh, also, just the fact that DPS was raised overall, like DPS per area in StarCraft 2 was way raised over StarCraft 1, which mm. makes it really hard for Zerg, I think, right? Because it's like... yeah then you have to lower their units even more because they're making so many units. So, like, StarCraft 2, Zerg just can't attack. Like, if you think about Ling Hydra, like, for, at some points, Ling Hydra was nice, but Storm is just insane. Uh, Hydras are pretty bad on their own. They basically can't fight at all. Like, ZVT, there's siege tanks, so they're just going to sit there. You're never going to attack into tanks and planetaries or whatever. And they drop you, you die. Like you kind of are tend to lent it to play passively because your late game is great. I'm not gonna say late game Zerg is bad. It's fucking great, but you have to play a certain style to get to there without just kind of throwing away armies and then having them attack you. Um, that's just the case for Zerg, honestly. I mean, I, I think ZVZ in Brutal War and Zerg of T is very similar. 
So I agree. Like I agree they're both, them. you know, low economy, but potential to go into longer game, although in Brutal War, not so much. But it's very kind of knife fight. All the other matchups are completely different to one another. Like they just don't work the same. And mm. it, it feels like Zerg in um in StarCraft 2 is more like Terran Mech or, or Protoss in Brood War, where you're working yeah. on your economy and then you slowly move out and you take over the map. But it's not, again, it, it, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. That's part of the reason why I wanted to play Zerg when StarCraft 2 first came out. It kind of felt a little bit more like Terran played in StarCraft 1. Yeah, I feel like we're... It, it, fe- it feels that way where you're like constantly, I mean, look at like spider mines, like creep spread, where you're just kind of slowly taking over the map, making missile turrets moving across the map, and eventually have your dead ar- uh, death army, which is the GG lords and, and investors, kind of like when Terran maxes out on mech, like that's your goal, right? In, in Brood War. Um, but yeah, I, I-, I would say that... Z- Terran in StarCraft 2 is more similar to Zerg in Brood War than, than the Zerg in Brood War to StarCraft 2. I feel like we're having like a quiet, nice dinner. We're all wearing kind of nice clothes, you know, steak dinner or something like that. We're all talking, shooting the shit, and then Jake kind of leans in. He's like, yeah, I absolutely agree. And also, it's kind of why I've changed my diet into uh, baby slushies. So what I do is I kind of grind up a bunch of babies, and I just start to... You can kind of consume their their overall organic matter. It just kind of keeps you youthful and feeling good. And I'm like losing it because I'm like I can't believe you just said that. Dan's kind of nodding his head quietly and BCQ. He's like, yeah, absolutely. We've been having baby slushies in Serbia for years now, and I uh, kind of understand where you're going with that. And then the conversation just Collins, meandered away. Like, pull from... people in. What? Because I want to I want to argue with all this chat, all these people in chat. Zerg can just attack. First of all, pull them in. At best, your argument could be made somewhat relevant if we're only talking about the current meta over the course of 10 years of zerg i've had the uh-huh. weirdest i not even let's get away from me as the example i've seen zerg's attack in so many stupid idiotic and fucking crazy ways and have wildly successful careers i'm talking about hyun violet there's a guy named true who has no business qualifying for every gsl ever but all he does is attack forever the idea that you sit there and say that you can only defend while True can't get his bank account above 100 bucks because he's got a degenerative gambling problem, but at the same time he applies that logic to StarCraft and crushes nerds who put in 20 times more practice and try to play a better game of StarCraft but can't because he's like, oh, it looks like it's a Ling run by for this game, folks. Here we go. We just had a Zerg at WCS literally talk about his strategy in the chat. Because he's such a <laughs> fucking anonymous weird guy I'm not that he just did some random cheese, fucking attack and beat the American champion 2-0. He fucking destroyed the best Protoss we've ever had in America. And meanwhile, I, I asked Jake point. to come on the show because I'm like, this is a pretty smart guy. He's not truly just a diglet. He comes in and he goes, Sir, can't attack. <laughs> they ever attack their siege takes and storm. And I'm like, get him out of here. Well, it's, it's true currently in this Holy current metal. Fuck. Just a <laughs> oh my god. Listen. You act like the Nidus doesn't been... exist. Literally, you're playing a safe game thinking the Zerg can attack, mm. and then their mm-hmm. entire army teleports in your base. And half their army consists of a macro unit called the Queen, which is meant to not be able to attack, but in every game of Zerg. They find a way. I don't know how, but they do. And there it is. And all of a sudden, I'm dead again. And it's like, well, Jesus, if only they couldn't attack. Uh, okay. Well, I don't disagree with anything you've said here, so. It's hard to. Not, this wasn't a part of my original point. That's fair. You can do gimmicky <laughs> shit. That's totally fine. I'm just saying that Zerg doesn't dictate the pace of the game, specifically. I, know. I mostly agree. Kind of I was just using sits- it as an example to be ranty. Like, you, you aren't wrong. I'm not going to say that we've never been able to attack, ever. Like there have been periods and like there was a Ling Bane Hydra was like the meta for a long period of time where you would just go for the attack. But as the game evolves and it keeps going further in this direction, it's not looking better for like aggressive options for Zerg. Um, I don't like the Nidus as the option because it's fucking stupid. Like you're basically like all or nothing with it. It just feels really dumb. Like I liked Ling Drop, but it was too good early on. It would have been cool if we had more of that stuff mid game Ling Drops and that kind of stuff to kind of put on the pressure. But they're not finding a good balance of like zerg being able to harass but also yeah 
Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, Starcraft 2 Zerg, when they are aggressive, they're all in, pretty much. Like, yes. if you attack with That's Link Bane Hydra on the third against Heron or Protoss, if that shit doesn't work, you're dead. Like, that, there's no, like, oh, just it, remake my smiling. units. Because the way economy works, they're going to counter push, and you're simply dead. In Brood War, when you make, I mean, a good example of, uh, is, is like, um, when you go for some kind of Hydra timing or doing whatever, you can put on the pressure... But the way mm -hmm. the economy works in Brood War, you're not necessarily all in. You might be slightly behind, but there's ways around it. In StarCraft 2, you're either all in or you're macro with Zerg. There's no middle ground. And yeah. there's no... I think what Jake said, like with the link drops, that's a way to, for Zerg to feel more swarmy. But if you do three of those drops, they get dependent, you get attacked, you're dead. So in a way, it's you're kind of gambling with your units. To speak on this with Brood War, like you see a lot of uh, lurker drops and this kind of stuff. Like all this stuff is really cool. There's a lot of actual, um, you know, worker harass for Zerg, and, and it feels like this just doesn't really exist in StarCraft Two. Like the way the maps work, like they they wall off certain portions so you don't just run in a hundred bailings into their mineral lines. They sit their armies in certain locations where it's really hard to do run buys, and then like they come out across the map and kill you. That's what it feels like. I'm not saying that that's generally what happens, but for Zerg, there really isn't much harass options. When you look at the other races, there's tons. Like you've got Banshees, you've got um, Oracles, you've got DTs, you've got Prisms. All these things are like you being on the map and doing something. And I think this is, you know, important for StarCraft 2. But Zerg doesn't really have that unless it's just like an all-in. Nidus is like that, but it's not at, the, at all at the same time because it's just like you fucking teleporting your entire army into their base, which I don't agree with. It's not fun. It's not an intuitive or anything um but i would like to find somewhere where zerg kind of has those options but doesn't uh, become overpowered so it has a bit of tempo you know without it, just being all in didn't we just do an in-depth episode where most of it was pointing out Cyril's counterattacks with zerglings that killed a bunch of scvs uh Can yeah send, but uh, then again I, I wanted to point out mostly maru or somebody else of a different caliber may have not had that same thing happen to them yeah, i'm not sure chance. Can you send a link it was time so you can check that out though? I, what? Who sent the link? I said, can Dan send you the link to that episode so you can check it out? Uh. <laughs> Again, it's, it's, not, it's not about, like, what I'm talking is not about game design or game balance. Like, I'm not saying, like, Zerg has options, doesn't have options. I'm saying, like, from point of view of when I played both games, it, the feeling of playing against Zerg and playing Zerg is completely different. In StarCraft 2, you're mostly, like, scared and yeah. you're being defensive. In Brood War, when you play against Zerg, you're scared of the Zerg. <laughs> kind of like how you're scared of Terran in StarCraft 2. You're I like, know. oh my god, is there is there a Widowmine uh, drop? Is there a Hellion drop? Is there, you know, 2 one, one What's coming? And uh, yeah, that, that, that was pretty much it. It's not like a thing to fix. It's just... Feels different. Yeah, different, it feels yeah. different, yeah. Okay, you know what? Actually, to think about it in this term, like, um, I guess if you look at Brood War... Uh, each race has one matchup that they're generally going to be more defensive in and one they're generally going to be more aggressive in. In StarCraft 2, like in StarCraft 1, Zerg is aggressive against Protoss, and Protoss is definitely kind of playing scared for a bit until they can get on the map and they can they feel like they can die at any time. But in StarCraft uh, 2, it's not as much like an all-in can come, but generally you're playing defensive against both Terran and Protoss until much later. Yeah, like again, you can all in, but you're like, oh my god, is you know, is what what push or harassment is Protoss gonna do? And Protoss is never like, oh, I wonder if I'm gonna take my third and <coughs> pretty links are gonna come in because, yeah, it just. I hear you, and yeah. obviously you're different just saying an opinion, so there's not like there's a yes or no to this. I would tell you that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm. It is different, but it's a little bit of the modernity of the games too. Zerg feels like Zerg in the older game because of again pathing, but also. Yeah. what it takes to get them and it, like the ultra is not colliding with stuff the way they do in starcraft 2 or not even colliding but like passing over which is very different i will tell you though i don't miss some things uh as that aggressive zerg and brood war i would try like a two or three hatch hydra timing sometimes which feels really all in because what would end up happening is they would the protoss would make 17 photon bombs, like 17 i'm only exaggerating a little let's call it nine and it feels like oh good i did damage they made nine photon cans there's no coming back from that and then eight speed lots run out from behind it and they kill you. And you're like, wait a second. What just happened? And that would happen <laughs> a lot. That was like, they're like, oh God, he's all landing. I better make 
a dozen cannons. In, in StarCraft 2, if you make someone make a dozen bunkers or anything, like cannons or anything, they're fucked up, right? That That's too much. In Brood War, it's like, no. Not today, Playa. So, <laughs> apples and oranges a little bit, but I understand what you're saying. Uh, it's more mm-hmm. just getting an opinion out there. You can agree or disagree. We've got a lively discussion out of it, and we revealed Jake to be a liar. So we can just kind of move on now. A liar? How but, about a liar? Nobody said that, Jake. Um... <laughs> Next topic. Listen, if anybody knows all ends, it's me. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So I feel like I should be qualified to speak on this. Yeah. Which made it weird when you said Zerg can't attack after you've been doing that literally your entire career, right? Well, there's a reason why I kind of retired. <laughs> I was not successful with it anymore. Don't qualify for DSL, <laughs> folks. So anyways, uh, you and True. Where, uh, next topic here. <laughs> where, where is that the last one? I thought there was another one. Get another oh there it is jake on how new ladder maps feel after release oh and i believe I was... this release isn't re- referring to the release of the new maps not like a sexual release that you may or may not have had. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean that was i figured we'd talk a bit about the maps because the maps are pretty different uh we not necessarily the maps. the maps themselves but the way blizzard's trying to incorporate uh like new things into the maps you know what i mean yeah I think that it's an interesting step, but at the same time, these maps feel like they have too much, you know? I don't know I'm how to explain this. I'm glad to have you here, Jake. You, I think you, you are right here. Have, we talked a little bit about I mean, I'm, maps, I'm, I'm, I would like to have some input on the guests here. I'm not sure if it's just, <laughs> just me talking the whole time or not. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I want to hear, so too much. If you had to pick a map, for instance, that you thought may have mm. some interesting elements added to it that aren't necessary, would you talk <laughs> about perhaps the slowdown effect on one of the maps? Yes, Turbo Cruise interesting. is... Interesting an interesting interesting thing but it also has like a million of them it would be nice if it was just like a couple but there's like six in the middle and like six on the right and left and that's a little bit insane if you remember back in the day when they tried to do those turrets they just put like 30 of them in a row and it would just one shot whatever went there like i like these things being incorporated but it feels like an all or nothing kind of thing where we don't just incorporate some things but we kind of make the maps really crazy by adding a ton of them um so far, I, I'm playing all these maps. They don't feel great. Um, I'm, I'm not. I don't have enough ex- game experience to say that they're good or bad yet. But they feel gimmicky, if that makes sense. Like a lot of the things feel gimmicky. Like the slowdown thing, that just feels like a gimmick. Um, the uh, Acropolis is a really weird map. Um, doesn't really have unique things, but it's just like the way it's laid out feels really weird. Uh, Sasha said this map is broken for Zerg, so I don't know. I haven't played in any games on it yet. Hmm. Um, Thunderbird has high yield gases in the center of the map, which is like the first map to have this in like eight years. And it has mineable minerals, which is the first map ever, I believe, in StarCraft 2 to have that. Totally fine, but you know, it just feels weird that they can't incorporate these things on certain maps, like King's Cove maybe having like a unique thing, maybe a high yield gas or something like or one of these standard maps having some normal thing, because they just break the maps by going way overboard. I think uh, I talked about this a little bit on GSL last night. I think that part of the problem is that pros will just insta-veto them forever, basically, and so you'll never really get real games on them. Uh, The way that things are done in Brood War is a league generally, historically, a league will have four maps, and thus you just have to fucking play the map, and that's (laughs) it, and you have to get good at it. And I almost feel like maybe we should do that in StarCraft 2 because I'd be I'm totally fine with that. sick of having seven map map pools where I only see four maps. Mm-hmm. There's only four different fucking maps that I ever get to see until we get to really the end of a tournament. And the thing is, I understand pro gamers want to play on maps that they're comfortable on, but truly for like entertainment purposes, a bunch of our terrible maps that people didn't like gave us a bunch of the best games we've ever seen i agree and i loved it if pro gamers for the you know had to figure out how to play turbo cruise i bet you we would see some cool games but instead it's going to get vetoed all the time and when we do see it it's just going to be some stupid all in or something because no one's practiced it so i think that the seven map thing has seen its day and let's get rid of having such big map pools in tournaments i agree 100 percent. i think they should just force <laughs> uh, a map pool because the thing is if you force a map pool it, it actually evens out the playing field anyways right because everybody has to play the same maps like if we do seven maps and we veto a certain couple maps it's not an even play field really um it it adds a uniqueness to the to the thing but it it doesn't feel the same way and plus you're right we get the same four maps that everybody considers balanced but they're not fun 
right? This is yeah. why GSL tries to, to force four player maps and, and force <clears throat> different things because four player maps tend to have really interesting games. They're not the same thing over and over again. Spawn locations are, are you know, change the game completely. I do think it sucks as a player because I, I can, you know, empathize on both sides. But from a viewer perspective and from a, you know, a game perspective that when players aren't comfortable is when we have the best games. So I think yeah. we should force four maps, all unique, and see what happens. The only problem is balance. I don't know where we go with balance in that situation. Mm. But... It's difficult, but we got to learn. Like, yeah, I mean, we got to learn. I agree. <claughs> what do you think, Beastie, on regards to that? Um, well, I think we, I think we go to the extremes in maps. It's, it's always that's what I was saying earlier. Like the map is either too open or it's so close that the Zerg can win. There's <laughs> never a middle ground. You know, there's never the middle map is open, but the chokes are on third favor Protoss and Terran. You, you know, we never have something like that. I feel like. And the maps that we do are maps that generally do very well and are very well received. I think that the map with slowdowns, I mean, we're never almost going to see any games except TVT on that. Why Why would you play that map as a Zerg when Terran's going to siege up just behind that and you cannot engage because your units are slowed, right? If you play Protoss, same thing is going to happen. You're going to get, you know, Siege Tank Liberator pushed through that and what are you mm -hmm. going to do? You're not going to engage into that. So those zones will just not be used at all. And I think, is it a cool idea? Sure. It's completely mm -hmm. the wrong way to implement it. It's not like, Agreed. oh, you know what? Let's put one in the middle. It's like, no way. Let's put 10 because that's going <laughs> to make people play on it. It's not. Right. Zergs are going to veto that map every time. I guarantee that 90% of Zergs already veto that shit. Like they're just not going to play it because mm -hmm. it's it's not good for their race. No Zerg unit benefits from being slowed, however what? many percentages it is, 50. Um, I think my personal favorite time uh, as a viewer and also playing was when GSL had mm -hmm. island maps. Are those maps the most balanced maps? No, they're not. But they provided the most unique games out there. Now, I'm not that saying cool. go ahead and have an island map in every single map pool, but why not an island map? Uh, you can, you doesn't necessarily need to be like you're on an island and then you need to expand to another island. Have it so that in order to get to your opponent, you know, you have your own one, two, three, whatever bases, and then you meet in the middle that's super open and suddenly favors Zerg a lot, right? Um, I would love to see more maps with like um, in, in the back of your main base, natural, like pocket natural, which is great for, you know, Terran mech. But have the middle be bad for Terran mechs. So, you know, the, the players have to play around it. I would love to see not necessarily stuff like Lost Temple, where siege tanks were broken when you put siege tank on it, but some specific parts of the map where they favor certain race. So when you play against that race, you have to avoid that area. Not mm. to avoid the map completely by putting those ledges everywhere through the map, like right. the slow zone. But just put uh, parts of the map where they favor. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying too. So right. So when I when I play that map, if on the left side there's those ledges, I'm gonna try to push through that side. I'm gonna try to push those expansions. But on that side, you can put a gold base for the Zerg. So if the Zerg wants to take the gold, then suddenly you have to fight those 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 ramps, those ledges, whatever. And same for you know another on another map, you can put a gold base on literally open space. And if you're Terran and Protoss, you're going to have a real bad time holding that base. But that's the trade-off that, that you have to do. And I think right. that most of the maps these days are oh, yeah, they're just the overdoing yeah. it one way or another. Look and there's just, no balance in it. Look what I just said in the chat, by the way. Wait, which chat is that? Clover said, check your whippers. But he tried to spell whispers like five times. <laughs> so, Beast Cutie, can you please repeat everything you just said? I'm sorry, I didn't hear anything. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. That, like, that was my original point, too, right? Like, they overdo it, right? There's no, like, uh, subtle, you know, uniqueness to the map. It's just like, oh, this map is the slowing map, and now nobody wants to play it. I agree okay. with you on, so on those even aspects. If, even if they went overboard with the, the slowing map, uh, I think that so far the mineral map looked pretty cool in the one game that we had on it. Thunderbird uh, looked pretty cool last night. 
But I, I want to know your opinion, the security on what Jake and I were talking about, where should we reduce the map pool size? Because all, we only get the same maps anyways. So why don't we just reduce um, the size and force people to play on more interesting maps than always having every game, every series is just like Port Alexander, Kairos Junction, King's Cove. You know, it's like, how many times am I going to, we have a seven map map pool. Not really. Not really though. Yeah. yeah. Like we see yeah. Cobalt three <laughs> times, you know, yeah. a season. Um, I would love that, but if the maps were different, like if it, let's say we have a four map map pool, but I want those four maps to be different. I don't want them Fucking to be three different, different yeah. versions of Port Alexander yeah. and, yeah, then yeah, like yeah. A, yeah, and then like I an agree. arena. Like I want to see uh, like this this thing with like slowing units, but position better because this mm -hmm. it, this is just like uh, I threw down some things the way I see it. Like I want to see a map that slows down units. I want to see a, an island map. I want to see a map with uh, oh, backdoor shit. natural, and I want to see yeah. a map that's mm. standard. Because I agree. I agree. Maps this would be play completely different. It'd be very exciting too. I think for me, it would like be for anybody. anybody. Exciting. And like, then when you play a best of five, or when you watch Serral, he imagine, has to play on an island map. Imagine what max packs could do on a fucking island. You know, but, like but that's not his build. That's the thing. You give creativity a real area to prosper on certain maps like this, right? Like that's where creativity really comes into play because you're playing a map totally different from all the standard stuff. You're catching people off guard. You're catching people out of their comfort zone because the maps are different. Honestly, a lot of the creative players, including you know myself, flourish during the beginning of the map seasons because players haven't figured out everything yet. Yeah. And if your maps are very different, like it lends itself to be an interesting game almost always. Uh, it's I don't know different how... strategies completely. Yeah, it is. Especially island maps. Island maps are like the extreme of like difference. But I think there's ways that Zerg can play it. My worry is Zerg would, would have a hard time. But at the same time, I, I feel like there's ways of playing around that, right? We just need to see what happens. We've never given it a chance. Well, yeah, uh, that's the thing. We, we've seen an island map and people are like, well, this is obviously shit for Zerg. Never see island map again. Well, try to right. take that island map and adjust it. What was yeah, maybe like natural creep on a third base or something, right? Like who the fuck yeah, knows? Fix you, can, it. you can do stuff like that. Exactly. Like, that like would be do something about it. Like don't just ditch the, the map concept because one was bad. Like just like this slowing down thing. Do I want this to go away and never show up again? No. I, I want to see it in a different map, used in a different way. I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. I just think it's not implemented as well as it could be. Um like honestly with the new Nidus as well for for the Zerg, would like going into it, would they be the weakest race? Yes, compared to the other two. But there are ways around it. You can add things that benefit the Zerg. Maybe like yeah. you start on your own sides of the map with the islands, but then the middle part of the gate of the map has like six spaces where you eventually have to go. But it's super mm -hmm. open. So it favors Zerg in that part of the game. So going into it, you have to, if you're Terran or Protoss, you have to do some damage to the Zerg so they don't just overtake the middle completely. Like something like that. So there's actual goal for the players with, with each game and what they need to be right. worried about within the map. This way, I feel like StarCrafts move into, okay, let's see who has better mechanics most three games. Yeah. There's but very little creativity as far as you know strategies. This would be a really good way of nerfing Serral. <laughs> like, surprisingly, it would be a really good way to nerf Serral. Like, they don't want Serral or nerfing, whoever. Man. Yeah. Nobody does. I don't know. I, I think there's it, it would be really interesting. The, the only thing is it has to happen on ladder. It can't happen in any of these tournaments where they're just like, all right, we're going to force these four crazy maps because nobody's going to practice for it unless it's like a really big tournament, WCS or whatever, yeah. BlizzCon. <laughs> nobody's going to be like oh i'm going to prep for weeks on these crazy maps and then go back to my yeah. wcs yeah. circuit yeah so it, it would have to happen on the ladder to implement it correctly the maps are really important it can't just be like the same three or four maps because then it gets really stale really fast and they have to find a way to to try and balance it but also have crazy different maps like totally different play styles can it'd I be great say, to see the other yeah. side of this is maybe you guys aren't in the majority by the way maybe this is not actually what's wanted from the player's what? perspective, I think... From the players, no, always but... I would even, not well, going to be. But the viewer perspective, having crazy games, I think, is always the, what everybody wants. And that's the best Starcraft way to ensure it. 
I don't necessarily agree with the island map as much as I think that would be interesting and fun to watch, but like, because I think balance is important because these are professional gamers and everything. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that every series is on the same four maps when we have seven maps. I just, I see it as pointless to have seven maps. And <clears throat> I would like to see some of these other maps used more. I really, I think it would be I, really I just, interesting. I feel like we're on episode 265 of Pile and Show. We ran out of things to complain about. And now Dan's on, I don't like the I number maps of maps huge. in a map pool. Does anybody else get really bothered by the number of maps in a map pool? And I'm like, well, it, I'm like, if I think about it, I'm like, though. I could see why I'd maybe be upset if I even noticed that that was an issue. The maps are really what? good right now, guys. The games are, they are, are basically based off of the maps. Like, they always are, Jake. Yeah, they are. What you, That's what we're saying. What if we had... So we get the map? same four fucking maps. We get the same four fucking games. Like, everybody's playing the same style over, over and over and yeah, over again. Yeah, I was really bored of that special busting out that same play style in each of his games during this last WCS. What about... I mean, and then okay, when fucking sure. Neeb showed up and he was doing the same shit as every Protoss, I was like, fuck me, I'm bored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody says this. Well, Guys, I... <laughs> Here's the thing. I Sometimes I need to grab us and shake us back to reality. Beastie's a smart guy, but he got you guys whipped up in a fervor about, I'm pretty sure, nothing. And he just kept, he said, <laughs> he said island map like 30 times. So he no, was like, island map is he was just doing Pavlov's dog. He's like, maps, maps, island map, island map, maps, maps. And you guys were like, island maps. That's what we're, <laughs> island maps. And I'm like, no, nobody's saying that. <laughs> <laughs> like, island map is just an example. You can take island map is the easiest to to compare because it's so extreme. Like again, yeah. you can use this example with the with the the cliffs that I mentioned previously, but it's harder to explain because there's no map like that. New Gettysburg. There you go. That's a good map to. It is. That map you know, changed the place. To be honest, to be honest, do you not, do you think... not remember people taking third base on an island and going carriers? Yeah, that was great. That was, was that great. good for you? That was you great. like that. Yes, because it was different. It I was would have new. loved to have had you yeah. exist back then, my friend, because it was not the popular opinion. I was I'm not the popular not even opinion like, from players. I like crazy games too. I'm telling you, the majority of people when we have these crazy maps, they get shouted down from the heavens. And the fact that if an island map ever touched a major map pool, do you know what kind of milk carton weird speech we'd have? We'd have Scarlet standing at a podium with 30 European Zergs standing behind her with their hands clasped, holding a hat, looking down at the ground. And she'd be like, the fact that you guys have done this to us is absolutely ridiculous. I blame Beastie Cutie. <laughs> and then Beastie Cutie would walk out and be like, Isla Babs, vote for me next year. But Isla Babs. I mean, like, you, I think, you can okay, joke I... all you want, but people know Arena and the Sun Station better than 80% of the macro maps. What people they... know those maps. Whether they're good maps or not, people oh, know them this because is not the a games were right stupid now, and weird. They remember them whether they're good the or not. What do you do? What? I think I think this might feel um, more like a player problem too, though, from our, our perspective, BC, because we play so many games and they all feel like the same shit. I mean, know? I hated playing it's on those possible. maps. Don't get me wrong. But watching those games, for me, is very entertaining. Like when you Spotful see someone, control just doesn't play enough games to feel this way. <laughs> like okay, like, when, no, when, when you hear someone, when you hear someone games. say like, "Oh my god, did you see that game?" It's it's extremely rarely it's on Port Alexander unless it was like an uh, an hour game of back and forth. I remember how many games were like really like good on Arena where someone took the the island gold straight away. Because it was uncommon. Hang on. It wasn't balanced. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Reina, we also had the Tempest Rush. Just Hang on. Shit. Like, guys, yeah, the Tempest Rush. Dan, yeah. real quick, what was the best game on Arena that you can think of? The best game was probably Stats versus Patience <laughs> from SSL round of four. I really enjoyed that one because uh, Patience had blank and Stats Ooh. didn't have blank, and he still out microed him through a guys, choke. Look at that. Because of the choke. Stats <laughs> because of the versus choke, yeah. Patience is the game that Dan wants to put forth as the best game here. If that's what we're talking about. You thought I wasn't going to remember one, Jeff. No. <laughs> nice fallback, you, though. You proved me right. You, you came up with a blinkless PvP between the most boring player on Earth, barely losing Arena to the was... best Protoss on planet Earth. I, I remember Alrena was fucking great. I used to go 12 pull on it, and they just built one pylon, and my 12 pull was forwarded. And I was like, holy shit, this map is crazy. You know? It was a great that's map. True.
Yeah, the Tempest rush off of two base because you just send them straight across. Oh boy, I remember. Then people this. taking the gold base on Arena and going carrier and stuff. Yeah, this is one of Jeff's favorite topics. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, guys, <laughs> you guys remember that MLG where they maps, had island maps, maps. <laughs> they had test bug. You, know you guys remember that MLG where they had test bug at it? Oh test yeah, bug? You test that, bug was sick. Remember test bug, the worst map probably to ever be put forward. I you guys like remember that one map. really cool game that happened on test great. bug? Itra versus MMA. Yeah, isn't yeah. that sick? Why was yeah, that? Sick? Was, that was great. Because MMA side. was killing himself, and Greg thought he already lost, so he left first. <laughs> that's yeah, one that of the big. That's one of the biggest games ever in StarCraft. <laughs> You're right. Too. You're right. You remember? You remember so we the need map? crazy maps. <laughs> you remember <laughs> Merry Go Round? You remember? No. Yes. I don't know what that map is. That was one of the best maps as well, no, and it was I completely different. Map. I, I love that map. I don't know how Merry I go around, about it. Merry-go-round's only problem was its spawning locations were fucked, right? Like certain people yeah. were just fucked by their spawn location. But that's if they what had a we way just to like, talked about. If they had a way to make like a pizza merry-go-round, that would have been great. I mean, you could, I think, if you place the uh, mineral patches a bit different, maybe. Yeah, I agree. I but, agree. I liked merry-go-round. Catalina was great. I I, I think uh, whirlwind was Catalina great. Catalina is also maps. different. Yeah, Catalina is yeah. also very different. I think, I, I think this from what we have now. What's happening is we're having over exposure to the pilot. Oh, you know what? My favorite Proxima. Proxima was sick. Do you remember Proxima? Isn't Proxima Wait, the gold base in the nap map? Where you have gold you know bases in your natural? This? You guys keep saying remember this map, and then the other three panelists don't remember it. But you're trying. Oh to yeah, with point the, with the you don't double... remember Proxima? No. Oh yeah. Wait I no. Do. Oh wait, Proxima's. Proxima's different. Oh, What's no, that map? There was a map with turns out gold base at gold. the natural. With yeah. Double, yeah. What was that? It used to be double gold. Uh, Why can't I think of its name? You know, another great map, Habitation Station. <laughs> Habitation Station. Why can't I remember this one? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. We're done, by season. the way. <laughs> oh, Habitation <laughs> Station was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked the Habitation map, Station. Yeah, oh, my God, you guys. What about Metalopolis? <laughs> No. So I think we have come to a great conclusion for the map segment here. Okay, maps, maps, island maps, maps, maps. Also, all, gold we bases. have two maps in the map pool, one of which has gold bases. Okay, <laughs> I think we did it. Someone write the letter no. to Blizzard. Gold Dan, bases, Dan broke cliffs, down really slowing nice. down units. My favorite part about the end of this talk, though, was basically you could boil down Jake and... Uh, you guys' argument into the shittier the map, the better. And you guys are trying to remember the shittiest maps ever made as your argument. You were like, How did mention Scrap Station? What do you guys think oh, about Metalopolis? You mean the one where the Terrans were floating their bases to the gold and your third was like, a Yeah, those games were map. great. See, but oh. see, that, okay, one game nine years ago, remember when Marine King lifted his base and floated to the gold? You guys nah, remember? I that. remember. Was... You guys all remember where you were sitting at that time. You all yeah. remember. But do you remember? You all remember. Game, <laughs> you re, do you remember a game on whatever map from three months ago that was macro map? You don't. Yeah, you don't. That's He's got thing. a point there. Okay, beastie. Oh my. God. <laughs> I just want to say, here's the growth of Jeff, by the way, because because BC at one point was making the argument like you don't remember the normal ones. You always remember the really bad experiences. I was like, whoa, this is. We're going to some dangerous territory, but I didn't think, I, you know, kept it. Anyways, let's boil down the, let's, let's end the show as we always do. Let's talk about the GSL round of 16 real quick, and we'll talk about some KSL, and we'll do the Patreon Q&A. Yeah. Okay, so we just started round of 16 last night. Uh, we kind of have an interesting set of groups. There's two Protoss in every group, so we do have that sick potential of uh, a repeat of Super Tournament. But maybe even better with eight Protosses in the next round because last night we did have Classic and Hurricane Advance. It was actually quite a good group, though. Really good group if, if anyone missed it and was on the borderline because the names are kind of funny, right? Uh, but that was, it turned out to be a really nice, well played group. Uh, on Saturday, we're going to have Gumio Parting Deer Sue, which is a super sick group. And then next Wednesday, a Trap Special Impact Hero. And then what I think everyone should give as a group of death. Uh, group D on the next Saturday, two weeks and some change from, or one week and some change from now. Uh, Dark Patience Innovation Stats. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty sick. Do you think we're going to get eight Protoss as the round of eight? No. <laughs> Sasha says we are. That would be all eight of them. There's, yeah. I mean, the thing <laughs> is, like, <laughs> There is a dis there is a possibility. There's not like a Protoss here that I look like, oh, there's no way you could make round of eight. All of them, I'm like, 
Yeah, I mean, I could I could see this group going <laughs> certain ways where that could happen. Yeah, dude, I, I love that. Would <laughs> you keep saying Sasha says? By the way, every time you do it, there's like a certain amount of people that nod their head, like yeah, Sasha says that. It's like, dude, <laughs> I love Scarlett, but she she has some of the craziest balance complaints out there that she says with a super straight face. Patience this would be one of them, by the way. Eight out of eight Protoss is advancing. Here's here's how you know Hot she's take. not Patience actually saying that. I'd give her three to one. Yeah. I'd give her three to one on a hundred bucks, and she wouldn't take that bet. I promise you. Damn. For all the Protoss is getting out? Yep. Four to I one. think she was memeing Four mostly. I, I don't know if she believes that. Yeah, I definitely agree, I, though, that Patience is coming out of that group, for sure. I you don't think, think so? so. You guys are fucking insane. <laughs> yeah. I think Come Gumi on. and Sue are going to crush Here's the why Patience groupie. isn't, uh, and he did oh, the you're group crazy. before. Nah. Stats fucks it up. They're going to practice for Protoss because of stats. Dark is going to fucking slap Patience, too. There's no yeah. way. They're going to practice for Protoss and beat stats, and then they're going to get wrecked by Patience because you can't practice for that. Here's He's going to do a Protoss. Live on Dark air. is going to slap. Tier huh? three, one month, gamble. You say Patience makes it out. I say it doesn't. Oh, that's so much better in your favor. Well, if he's going to make it out like you think he is, it doesn't fucking matter, does it? Yeah, you said he's going to make it out 100%. How about this? <laughs> well, here I'll we do go. Tier, <laughs> you do a tier three for me, and I'll, I'll get sure. one patience. Call. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what I say? He's I'm, obviously not as confident as he thought he was, though, yeah. huh? Well, that's all I really wanted. Well, I'm not about to eat a shoe about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be dumb. Wait, we, we need more do that? gambling, though. Group B. Dan, I saw it. I felt B? That was Who's really getting good. out of group B? Gumio and Sue, for sure. Gumio, for I don't know sure, he says. I think Deer has to get out. Deer is right? going to get out. Are you not even watch StarCraft? Like, what? Island maybe, maps. I think. Yeah, maybe Yarr. if there were island maps, Sue and, Sue and fucking Gumio would Have get you out. seen the <laughs> Max Pack well, Sue, Sue would lose, then, if it was an island map. <laughs> <laughs> Gumio and Sue go through. <laughs> I think, I, deer, I think deer I think deer right? Deer Gumiho is like the most logical. Favorite thing part about say, this I picture think. is that I want so bad for there to be a world where Jake ever wears a shirt like that. That's all I want from this picture. <laughs> Wait, what shirt? I love the lack of neck. Is there a shirt on here? Yeah. Oh nice. I could I could wear that. Maybe a donation That's goal. What I'm yeah, donation goal. <laughs> if Pylon gets a certain amount of supporters, I'll come back with a shirt like that. Hmm? Yes. So you guys we're can gonna, sell we're me. gonna I'm follow fine with up the controversy of Tasteless announcing that at hundred patron supporters he'll do something. <laughs> We'd like to double down say at 1,000 patron supporters, we also will be having Dan do phone calls month weekly with every single patron supporter. So <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna put that out later. Uh, yeah, so GSL gonna be great. Is it tonight, May 22nd, right? No, no, no. We had it last night, so it'll be Saturday again. We have castle oh. tonight. Okay, Saturday it is. Uh, KSL coming up, my friend. Yes. Anything exciting happening there? Yeah, we just hit the round of eight, so that means we're almost at the end of the tournament, actually, because most of it is the group stage. Uh, but we have that round of eight bracket. Um, it is, it's, it's pretty sick, actually. Um, you know, the our final results were Stork uh, beating last, and it was, uh, it was pretty sick. It was pretty one sided. Stork just looking really monstrous. Um, so now he three would Jadong, and he three would last. Now, looking at the bracket, like one side is is way over there, like best stork and then ample mini. So that's a funny side of a bracket, right? Like we got two very old Protosses. Uh, and then you have like mini who's always getting deep in every tournament and then ample the brand new Terran. So that side of the brackets, it, I look at that, I'm like, huh, what is, what is going to happen over there? It's kind of hard to predict. And then you look at the other side and it's just broken, right? It's ASL finalists in snow you got second place to rain then we got sharp who got second place to sulky in ksl finals and then you got the champion sulky and rain the best protoss and zerg out there right now so that yeah. side is just so ridiculous and i mean it that's it's a great round of eight to be honest i'm excited tonight we're gonna have best stork and ample mini very cool good stuff <laughs> Five out of eight Protoss, though. How did they sneak in there like that? That's incredible. Truly, it's the season of the dragon. That race. That race. I think we need some balance changes in Brood War. What do you guys think? Good. I do think so. We just need more iron maps. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we did that. That's the season. That's the season that Rain won in ASL was a bunch of yeah. islandy maps. Not yeah. a Zerg, though. We should do that. It's crazy. How are we gonna nerf Serral otherwise? This is like a perfect nerf. 
Okay, well that's happening tonight, guys. So make sure and tune in. Is it going to be you and Mr. Tasteless? That's right. Uh, tonight and tomorrow night, we will do the round of eight. And I think all those matches are really, really strong in the round of eight. So very excited about this week. That will be very cool. Hopefully you guys will check it out. Uh, and that is that for now. So we just have the Q&A portion of the show to go. And we'll call it episode 52. Been a lot of laughs, a lot of good times. Thank you all. Let's get into the questions now. So if you're wondering how to join and ask questions, there's a couple of different ways. You can go to the Pylon Show website. And then if you're a Patreon supporter, you can click through that link there and you'll be prompted to ask a question that is limited in characters. Had some guys, Gunner, like to ask a little bit longer questions. But because there are people that like to ask longer questions, we also made it so that if you're a higher tier supporter, you can ask us. Nate, we encourage you to write a fan fiction. Guys, really excited to tell you that today we have our second fan fiction written up for us. It's coming from Zesty. It's oh, called oof. Chapter One. <clears throat> Hard to do this with a straight face. It's been <laughs> it's been thirty years since the Eternal Conflict. For the first time since the Protoss cleansed their first Koprulu sector planet, the three intelligent races of the galaxy have entered a ceasefire. Terrigan is gone. Her ascendance as a Zel Naga and subsequent banishment of Amon ushered in a new era of tensionless peace. Humanity grew to forget the devastation wrought by decades of planet-wide destruction, world after world. Back on Earth, little more than stories remain of the great fleets that left the damned corner of the galaxy. Admiral Dugal's mission was a failure. The people of Earth never knew their fate. The transmissions back to Earth only tell of the fleet's destruction at the hands of the Zerg. I don't see where sex happens in this, but okay. The United States, uh, the United <laughs> Earth Directorate... This way. Yeah, you're probably right. The United Earth Directorate covered up their failures to the general populace. They couldn't bear another civil uprising. Their precarious position as the sole power structure governing a dozen local sector planets and over 70 interstellar colonies has led them to become increasingly secretive and militaristic. As best as they can tell, the threat in space remains. Radio, X-ray, and psionic waveforms continue to reach sensors tanked with monitoring computer You know what's funny about this? is I'm getting flashbacks to questions we actually got asked before we put limits on this, where people are like, okay, I've got a question for you. This would be the kind of description we'd get, and we'd be like, guys, stop. <laughs> They've decided to try again, this time with full schematics and understanding of the biological and technological advancements of both the Protoss and Zerg at their disposal. A new fleet constructed by harvesting heavy metals from the asteroid belts, forged and hardened by warp drive compaction in the heart of gas giants had led the commanders of this new fleet to believe that they will be able to cleanse the alien threat from destroying humanity once and for all. Admiral Robinson stands at his desk of the mighty Barristan battlecruiser, first of its line, and calls over the intercom for its lead strategist and researcher, Fleet Admiral Stemkowski, to prepare the fleets for jump, set course for Marsara, to be continued. Wow. So, Admiral... Robinson and then Fleet Admiral Stumkowski. That would be me above you, right? Uh, let me read this. Admiral Robinson and we have Fleet Admiral Stumkowski. Yep, maybe, but it, it's me giving you an order, so I guess not. Damn. This guy did write it's just like real order. life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Zessie. It's very nice. Uh, you can do <clears throat> the other questions now. I do read those whole things waiting for weirdness to kind of spring forth, and I, and I read it for the first time, so I don't know where it's coming, but that one was just straight up. I like that. So no sex? The next, in, next part of the story. No I'm sex. glad. I'm glad yeah. that they're keeping it simple. The closest we got was the fleet got hardened, so that was definitely where I became, <laughs> got a little bit more aware. As soon as Cobra pulls up the next question, I'll be able to ask it. Is that it? Is that on the screen? No. Am I wrong, Cobra? What's going on? Oh, that is the question. Read him there, or I can bring him up here on your... Oh, no, that's... Oh, he asked... It. I was just confused with Zesty as well. Let me see. You're right. Okay, I can read that. So Zesty asks, for everyone but Jeff, what's a physical feat slash skill slash sport slash thing you could beat Jeff at? Jeff, do you agree with their responses? Jeff, what is one physical thing you couldn't do that each of the others could? Why do all of my questions sound like icebreakers at company-sponsored events? Laugh out loud. 
Okay. Um, <clears throat> a physical <laughs> skill sport thing that I could beat Jeff at. I could walk longer in the heat than you, Jeff. Hundred yes. percent. Hundred percent. Much further than you. Yeah, mostly because I just wouldn't. But yeah. Dan is a living camel. That's kind of how we knew him back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> like, gosh, we're like in New York. I can gotta... I can walk endlessly, and the heat doesn't yeah. really bother me. It's like a hot summer day in New York. I'm... Like, how are we gonna get there? And Dan's like, let's walk. And it's like, but it's sixty miles. And he's like, I'll start now. And we're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you better get going. You better stop complaining, babe. Put your shoes on. I feel like whatever BC says, I could say as well. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm, I want his creativity here. Okay. Football. Oh, your table well, tennis. European football, you uh, mean? Yeah. Yeah. Football, table tennis, and uh, surviving on an island. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I could do these. Maybe surviving on an probably. island. Yeah. Like, he doesn't seem to he like islands. He could be in tabletop tennis and, and yeah, soccer, he would, probably. He would not last there, I can tell you. I was actually back in the day a surprisingly good soccer player, but I haven't played in years. And you're European, so you're probably just way better, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I agree with all of them. Jeff, what is the one physical thing you couldn't do that each of the others could? Uh, Dan could have gone for the obvious one, which is like properly download AIM or Skype and then utilize it. <laughs> Uh, Jake runs a house. I think that, that there's a lot to be admired there. It seems like you would just sit there and pay rent, but you don't. You do a whole bunch of different stuff. I'm basically stuff. a full-time babysitter. A full-time so. babysitter. I could not do that. I would yeah. not be very good at that. And um, Beastie with a straight face said a lot of things today that I would I would not be able to sleep at night after saying. So he's got an incredible ability to swindle. <laughs> Evo. Question for Jeff. Terranids versus Zerg. Been a Zerg player since day one and a Terranids player since like 6th edition. Do Terranids actually dominate as much as I think they do? Yeah, so Terranids in the in the lore are one of my favorite parts about one of the things they suggest is that there's invasions coming from this side of the galaxy and then this side of the galaxy. And the theory is that everything outside of the known universe is all Terranid space and they're just coming in from everywhere. The oh, numbers, that's sick. Yeah, the numbers in Warhammer are off the charts. It's like trillions and bajillions of bodies um starcraft 2 kind of suggests some of that but then it kind of hurts itself with scale sometimes like in the campaign kerrigan's ship is meant to be just absolutely massive and it certainly is but then you see like the invasion scenes and they're kind of scaled down there's not as many bodies out there um so no it's it's tearing it's forever here's a good one for you guys from hyper turtle why are four-player maps so unpopular in StarCraft II? Did the dislike for them get worse after the economic changes of Legacy of the Void? I think it's Dave. just uh, hard to scout. If you scout someone third, it's really, really just puts you at a disadvantage. And um, uh, hmm. a common misconception yeah. was that like people liked them more in the past. Nobody liked them in the past yeah. either. Like the game was just less not. understood, and there was like more leeway yeah. with doing dumb stuff in maps back then because people were not as complaining yeah but really nobody liked them at any point like they're still really hard to scout on all situations cross position was almost always favored for zerg close yeah. was always bad for zerg like these things just happened regardless of you know what four player map it was um i think that it's still good to force people to play on these maps but yeah that's a side note you see i mean it, like if, if protos doesn't scout first or second against Zerg at 12 pools, you're kind of just dead. So I feel like that's one of the main reasons and like the easiest example of why they're not really a thing anymore. It's, I feel like this, this affects Protoss the most where if you don't scout straight away, you will just lose pretty much it. Or you can gamble and in making stuff and you know, the Zerg goes hatch first. Where like, well, would you put your max packs gateway? That's the question, you know, would you put it in the middle <sighs> of the map? Uh, he would know. He would just <laughs> he would just look at the map and just do it outside of their base. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with everything you said. I think the big one for me was just the map imbalances that it created, which Jake, Jake touched on. But that was the bigger point, right? Like sometimes you'd get a map where you're like, okay, in this matchup, if I get such and such base positions, it's good for me. And other times it's not. And there's a lot of variance in StarCraft, but I feel like that was too much. So players didn't like it. Uh, Mitchumus asks. Dear TPS, my Terran friend Alan refuses to wall off. Despite our condemnation, he has now progressed into Silver League and further <laughs> believes himself to be free of error. 
We cannot seem to get through to him no matter how much we degrade him during our lands. He is so stubborn, Jeff. Please advise him. What was his name? Alan? His name is Alan. Alan, you tell your friends to fuck off. All wow. right, you do what you do. You're going to be the next Max Pax. Don't listen <laughs> to them. You do what the fuck you want, okay? You don't want a wall, you don't wall, okay? You tell them that. You link them this clip, too. Tell them a Code S player's got your back. You go. X Code S, whatever you want to say. Former, yeah. Uh, Beast Cutie, any words of encouragement for this young man? I mean, as long as you're beating your friends, don't change a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually the answer. If, if, yeah, if you're beating them and they're telling you that, uh -uh, not today. Not today. <laughs> not today, Satan. It. That's what we say. <laughs> All That's right. Alessander, if you were, if you four were asked to choose three contestants each for a new WCG Ultimate Gamer Show, who would each of you choose? The show had the gamers compete in a real-world versions of games as well as the games themselves, such as Dance Dance Revolution, Car Racing, Street Fighter, Rock Band, etc. Who would you guys choose? Cyril. That'd be so entertaining. I'd I like would to see not him pick play Cyril. some of these other games and see how he does. Wait, are you are we choosing someone to represent us, or are we just choosing someone just we want to see through these games? Um, this is a hard one. Maybe I want to see a laser because a laser just feels like a bit of a brick in a lot of situations. So I think that would be interesting. Um, and he's also like really try hard, so that would that would be interesting. I think. Okay. Uh, oh, I would choose uh, some StarCraft One players to go there, like um, the the ones that were bad mannering BC Cutie, so we can see how good they are at yes. Easy games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would choose. Idra, Puck. Oh, shit. And then the last one would be like Todd, because Todd would be a pretty good. What about someone like sure. Naniwa, too? Naniwa, Naniwa, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the better answer. Right? <laughs> that would be great. Naniwa, Idra, and Huck. Or like Combat X okay. would be okay, too. I think I we've got to our dream special. lineup. I would love to see special. Just you think you would? It. Like a lot of people say that, but then you kind of. Yeah, find... yeah, yeah, I agree. Not really. But, but, but I, I wanted to Jeff. try hard, though. Oh. Not to just be like, eh. I think he'd just be bad at it. Yeah, he's just bad, man. It's just yeah. He's a beautiful StarCraft player. Okay, so we got Naniwa Hakidra. Who's our fourth? We need a, a, well, like a legendary fourth. Just three. The question is, we can do. Oh, only three? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Those are three then. Tasteless. Done and done. <laughs> I think Tasteless would calm everybody else down. We can't. Have I think that. I think Nick would be the calm one for like the first three days, and he'd get sick <laughs> of that shit, and he'd get pretty bad. <laughs> Nanny and Tasteless argument would be one of my favorite. Like just to film that. Oh like my an god! Hour. Yes, that would be so sick. All right, Red Gunner guy. I am a Terran doing a one-one-one expand or two-one-one. A scout and a mass of Roach Ravager about to attack. What exactly do you suggest would be the best response to both hold and put me in the best position possible? By the way, I'm in Platinum Two. Beastie, go. Scout earlier. If you already see Mass Road Travager, what were you doing? I agree. I mean, it's, too, it's kind of it's too kind late. Of like, it's already on the way. Yeah, it's kind of like if I see maxed that army of Brutal Lords and I got Marauders, what do I do? Well, yeah. it's kind of dead already uh, yeah. by then. But well, let me I mean, if you want to, you know, it's not like you can make a, an army to defend it. At that right. point, you're kind of dead. So, Siege right, Tanks. Let's say you scout it earlier. Yeah, I think you, you try to get a Siege Tank. Yeah, out. Siege Tank benches, maybe a bunker or two. Yeah. But uh, scouting earlier is yep. trick good. question. He's also got four thousand in the bank and two thousand gas. So what do you do with that? <laughs> well, that, that's well, that's why he's asking because he doesn't know what to make, and he's probably in the game right now. Like pause, and he's just like, "What do I do? Where do I go from here?" Yeah. Christopher Hollow Hollow Peter says, "How do you develop humor? Both of your humor has matured beautifully over the years. Jeff with his storytelling, patriotic humor." And Dan, with his nerdy, in-the-moment reaction humor. Are you both naturally funny guys and just had to get over camera shyness? Or is the humor developed with time? So, the best way to answer this is from Dan's perspective. And I would tell you that if you can surround yourself with college-educated, um, like, really funny, <laughs> handsome, charismatic people, some of that is bound to rub off on you. Like, for Nick and Dan, it took about 10 years for a little bit of Nick to rub off on Dan. Um... Is that about right, Dan, would you say? About right, yeah. 
took about 10 years. No, joking aside, how to develop humor. I think, uh, I think a lot of that is confidence in, you know, talking and public speaking in general. But of course, humor can apply to everything. It doesn't have to be in front of a camera. It's mostly just like, I don't know, kind of reading the room and being used to people. And you got to take risks. I call myself an 85% person because I definitely say shit that's just stupid and not funny at all. And I've done that my entire life. Mm -hmm. But if I was always worried about that, then I would not say a whole lot. Yeah. You got to sometimes you, say stupid shit. You do. Yeah, you, it's it's super true where it's like I shoot off a lot of jokes and sometimes they really crash. But if you shoot off enough, some of them work. Yeah, you also learn from the ones that crash and ones that don't too, right? Yep. Like, yeah. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. I, I some of my first cuz I, I was never I was never that funny. I don't think I am even even now, but I I've gotten better and some of my first experiences are fucking Jeff at Home Story Cup like roasting me for the shit I say. And funny thing is that's actually made me funnier i think over time i've gotten better and i'm still you know learning and he still shits on me now but I, I i am developing i think you are you are funny as shit dude absolutely you are um yeah, the first episode of the oldest you were stuff on... was fucking so dumb well that's everybody I... I knew word. <laughs> <laughs> it's um it, actually one one tip is if you miss your timing for a joke don't say it let it die. <laughs> because this is actually this is an important thing because a lot of times i have something really funny to say and nick won't stop talking and i just have to let it go yeah because it's like it's you don't want to take a joke that could have been funny at a moment and then use it after the moment's passed one sec then it's just like you know you want to avoid that yep that's actually very good advice some drunk Canadian ass is lasagna a casserole? DC, what are yeah. your thoughts? Um, I have no opinion. No, opinion. Uh, I don't. I don't know the answer to that, but I have a counter question. Okay, is uh, you know a bread bowl? Yeah, is a bread bowl a sandwich? Like if you have a bread bowl with no. soup in it, is that a sandwich? No, it's a soup. You just get to eat the bowl. But you, it's got bread around it, which is what makes a sandwich. So I'm pretty sure a Slices bread bowl is a sandwich. Slices of bread make a sandwich with meat in between it particularly. But, I mean, it doesn't have to be meat. It can be other kinds of sandwiches, right? But it's it's slices of bread, not just bread around you. Are you sure? Yeah, so for How instance, like... How you get to decide what a slice is? There are two slices. They're just funny shapes. One's a bowl and one's the like, lid. Like, nobody's calling a calzone a sandwich. Or, like, they don't fold their pizza. They're like, it's well, a sandwich now. Here's another question. Is a calzone a sandwich? <laughs> if you want to if you want to really trigger a person from Chicago. See, that's the timing right there. That's the timing I was talking about. So, drunk Canadians teasing cuz uh, if you want to really trigger a, a, a person from Chicago, you ask them if a deep dish pizza is a casserole and not a pizza. <laughs> They'll flip out. <laughs> Always keep it alight. Thank you, drunk Canadian. Um, Neon asks, can someone gives us a sort of roadmap to visiting the GSL as a foreigner? How it is to travel to South Korea, get around the city, talk to people, and get to the studio. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, South Korea is very nice. Everyone's very friendly and will try their best to help you. The subway system is the best in the world. Uh, like every city comes to Seoul to study it before they make their own subway systems because it is so good. So all you have to do is learn how the subway system works, which is super easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and that makes it easy to get to GSL. We are like a five minute walk from a very popular station. Yeah. So it's really, it's really, it's really hard. easy. Yeah. I think it's more intimidating thinking about it than it actually is. When you get here, almost all the signs are in English for the subway. Oh, one sec. It's not as hard as you think. You should just make the plunge. Yeah. Sounds like instead of a phone, he has like a children's music box going off on his lap. He's like, one second, guys. I got to see if this Jack in the Box... He's talking to up. Elmo right now. I.I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ron says, for Dan, how would you feel about Blizzard adding a simple menu allowing players to customize target priority? For example, your Banshees can now auto-prioritize worker kills over Queens. Damn. That here's the thing, you'd have to get like key macros for that because you'd want to switch that throughout the game. I think that would be way bad for the game. Like if you think about it, right? Like what if you could just shade your adepts in and have them on priority high priority drones? Oh, 
my God, that would be so broken. You just right? shade them in and just let them go. <laughs> you just shade them in, you go do something else. You don't need, you don't even need to do anything. Yeah, no, that would, I think that would be really bad. Yeah, yeah it would be become like this weird technical thing. It almost becomes bot programming at that point. I, I mean, you, you no. can put your Marines to target fire banelings. Oh my God. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Siege yeah, tanks that's... as well. Like, yeah imagine that like if you put broodlings on like no priority like you you know and oh yeah my God. zombie grove you can ask pg-13 questions but if you're wondering how a woman's body works this is going to be a terrible panel for any kind of questions along those lines um one of the only times i've ever seen roddy triggered was something similar to this you can actually make a hot key for having your phoenix automatically uh, consolidate and you just like spam it, you like set it to your, your space bar. Yeah. And uh, he faced a guy, because that's obviously advantageous in Phoenix versus Phoenix. So I watched Roddy get kind of silently mad about that. And it made me think of that because you were talking about if you could set priorities, there'd just be a bunch of like algorithms that you set and stuff. Like, yeah. I do oracles yeah. and they ignore everything except for they only go for probes. Because one of the things that I really appreciate about that is when two oracles show up in a mineral line, it's actually somewhat. It's not difficult micro per se, but it's hard to... You can appreciate someone with better micro that target fires down the workers and gets the six or seven kills versus when you watch my stream and I get two or three and I lose an oracle. And I'm like, well, that sucked. But if you could just set it to priority, just go in their hold position, they'd kill 12 and you'd be like, nope, that's good. Uh, Crispy. Hello. I love watching you cast Brood War games and host events such as the Holiday Bash. I would gladly pay money for you to cast... Resent, resent, or old replays in HD, or host new events. Any chance you would consider something like this in the future? Maybe Patreon or something like that. Love you all. Yeah, I mean, we love doing it. Uh, we do talk about this from time to time. That there's just uh, the esports ecosystem has changed quite a bit. No one seems to want to. Uh, put the money up to actually make an event like this anymore. We had a bunch of them and they were fantastic. And trust me, Jeff and I have been trying to get something like that going. Just like we tried for two years before we got the pylon show together. We've been trying now for over a year to get, <laughs> to get something like that again together. And it's, it's really hard. It's really difficult. The, yeah, the, 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 that is the answer. Um, in the future, we'll probably end up doing stuff. Like this next show match is a StarCraft 2 one. Maybe it'd be cool for Dan and I to commentate a Brood War match together or something like that. And if the time came around, we're like, hey, does anyone want to contribute to the prize pool type of thing? Maybe you can contribute to that. And that'd be yeah, kind maybe. of the affordable way to make something more exciting and fun. But as far as like Dan uh, commentating an event or an event actually happening, unless you are quietly a prince of like Dubai or something like that, you're, <laughs> we're talking tens of thousands of dollars. And, Lots and lots and lots and lots of money. So sadly, it, it won't happen. Um, T Quick Brown Fox says, "How much of a physical strain is it to cast regularly? We've heard of posture issues, wrist issues, and now vocal core issues. Has it ever gotten bad enough that you wanted to delete your YouTube channel, quit casting, unfollow, and avoid everyone in the StarCraft Two scene for six years? Any tips for vocal cord care? <laughs> What's this meme on?" <laughs> This I, is it like must about be a husky. husky. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't watch the video, but maybe he says it's his vocal cords or something. Okay. Um. So I'll give my quick answer. You guys can talk about it. And it doesn't just have to be commentating. It can just be the fact that we talk on you know Beastie QD streams ten hours a day and talks all the time as well. It's really difficult. Uh, you get stronger over time. Like I've been commentating for a long time, and I'm always you know I'm you know, I'm, a, I'm just talking all the damn time. So I actually have. It very rarely bothers me because we also have nice working conditions for the most part. Most of these WCS events, stuff like that, it's like four to six commentators. There's breaks. They hydrate us. They get us snacks. It's really nice. That said, your boy Jeff is working with Games Workshop to get kind of that commentating world up and going for tabletop with Warhammer 40K. And they are early days esports. So I got hired for a couple of events. My co-commentator, my one co-commentator... Frankie GM Papa, and that's actually his name. He's one of my best friends in the whole world. He's a great guy. Soft spoken guy. Doesn't say a lot. Jeff, not as much. So we'd get hired to do this event. The two of us would commentate for three days, maybe four. Twelve to fourteen hours a day. And I thought I had a strong voice, but on day three, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Frankie, say something. He's like, 
It looks like the one player's in a lot of trouble. What do you think, Jeff? And I'm like, ah! So, for the most part, no. And I know you're just memeing, but yeah, you can, you talk a lot. Same thing with singers. Have you ever been with the person that's in a choir or sings? They can shout. They can, they can project. Yeah, you got to be good at controlling your voice and stuff. I mean, it can get tiring. No, Just take care of your yourself and pace yourself too. Sometimes if I have a ton of casting, I go much slower about it at the beginning and let it ramp up over time. Honey, that's I saw in the chat too. Honey helps as well. It's good for the voice. Gildlin, congratulations, Dan. But I have to ask, as a fellow New Hampshireite and parents to twins... What the fuck were you thinking having a fourth? Well, I guess my twins must be better than your twins. Got I em. love them so much. I just want more. Checkmate. And thank you for the, the kind words. Yes, thank you, Gildan. Mr. Ravi Parikh asks, Oh, never mind. He didn't ask a question. Anyways. Okay, next question is from our very own No Regret. He asks, If I made what? a promise to the community to eat a shoe, how can I make people uh -huh. forget it? Also... I concede Zergs have the best all-ins, Jeff. Sorry for my stupidity earlier. P.S. I am a doo-doo head. A doo-doo head? Yeah. That was me. You're right. I said that. Thank you, no regret. Can you answer my question for me? What's that? How do I make the community forget about my promise? Um, they, sure have, involved. they have an attention span of about a day. <laughs> Just got to lay low for about a day. Uh-huh. Remember that time okay. there was a thread with 500 comments about I was the worst commentator ever? No. I Nobody don't remembers that. One day later, it disappeared I... forever. Wild. You're a genius. What part of artichokes? Like, is it the hearts, the leaves? It concerns me, honestly, about Eric's preferred Would you like me to get them? Office. Yeah. Can <laughs> yeah. you ask him, please? Can we get these answers live on air? Where's Eric? Is he? Do you know where Eric is? He's Dan, gone. I don't know where he is. Dan, let me ask you guys this. Maybe this is just an American thing, because it sounds American when I think about it, but... Do you know that some people will boil an artichoke and then take the like leaves of the artichoke and dip it into melted butter and then eat it? That's what they do. And they don't even eat it. They drag it across their teeth and they just... Hey, Eric. You ever done that, Dan? They want to they no know about the artichokes. Can you come talk to them? You guys never heard of that? They want to know about the artichokes. Butter and mayonnaise, too. Yeah. That's, that's some... Haven't... Uh... I don't think I've kind of a weird thing. Sounds... Hey, hey, what's up? Hi, Eric. Oh my god, it's Eric. Can you what's do that Eric? pose, oh. please? Can I do what? Never mind. Why do you put artichokes on your pizza? I don't put artichokes on, your, on my pizza. I just want to see how they taste like in the, was in it good? the pizza. It was. It was really good, actually. Would you, would you do it again if you win another pizza pie bi weekly? For that price? Ah, if I win, yes. But for that price, no. If I was going to buy one. Yeah, only if it's free. Yeah. Uh, one one quick question for you. You're an up and coming top player. If some idiot had people put island maps into the map pool, or just really crazy maps, for you as someone that's career is based off of results and, and consistent gameplay and what yeah. you can train, how would you feel about that person? Especially if they were a privileged former streamer that now makes thousands of dollars playing random. Well, Island Max specifically, I would not like that person very much because yeah. I'm a Zerg and I don't have Air Unit, so yeah. I don't think it will work really well. Okay, fair enough. But other gimmick maps, I don't know. My best map in the in ZVT a long time ago was Dozen Station, so... Okay, let's get you that. off. Norga, or Eric, thank you. Let's get Norga back <laughs> wait, on. So, Appreciate wait, so that. you're saying you like... No, uh, that's it. You gotta uh, go on to the next question. Uh, <laughs> next question, guys. Sorry about that, Eric. I didn't hear the end of what you said. Uh, Key Up Fire... <laughs> Asks if each one of you could pick one new map, fun map mechanic. This seems like a non question. No, I'm just kidding. A la the time warps and quick minerals to make pass that hasn't been seen before to get Korean pros out of their comfort zones. What would it be? Do you think the degeneracy of the NA ladder could make any players beat Koreans with it? I think if you made a, a map. Oh. Uh, where it was even easier to cannon rush than some of these maps that we have, then yes, <laughs> NA could destroy Korea. So I think the Korean pros are actually not very good at cannon rushing. They're, like, occasionally you get someone that does a good job, like a parting, but he plays on NA. He does? Ooh, that's a good point. What do you think, BCQ? There's questions in your wheelhouse, bud. 
Uh, wait, what would it take? All right, so next question, I guess, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just agree with the cannons, I guess. Yeah. You know Maybe what? like the Korean side of the map just like has less resources or something? I don't know. I could see NA players beating Koreans if the map had unpowered neutral cannons and then like Puck got you <laughs> you know, a Terran or something, something like that. And you, just, you could pile on rush again, but it powers the cannons and you start winning that way. That'd be a pretty sick map, I think. All right. Jack Wiegrick asks, Jeff and Dan, the Corrupted Cup land tournament for Brood War is coming up in six months. Will you hold to your promise and be there? If not, how much money do I need to crowdfund to get you there? So the Corrupted Cup, uh, we actually should have <clears throat> talked about it in this week in Star Cup, but it was just announced like yesterday, I think. Um, oh, okay. It is a new WCG-esque thing run by Russ Brain, where there's qualifiers all over the world for a finals in October. Uh, offline in Russia. So it's super sick. I will be one of the qualifiers I can play and I will play. The other one is over the ASL qualifiers. So I don't think I can Ooh. do that one, unfortunately. But I'm going to give it my best shot to qualify. And obviously, if I qualify, I'll be there. Uh, is it regional qualifiers? Qualify. So like Americans versus Americans yes. and so on? It's it, American Canada is lumped into one set and there's two spots available for that. The so Dragon wins and then somebody else? Perhaps, yes. Dragon's very, very good. I'll tell you what, I'll but, take a look at that, and that, yeah. that'd be a reason for me to play. So yeah, I'll try. Yeah, I know, it's going to be fun. It's it's uh, coming up in June. There's going to be two qualifiers split up in, in June. So, cool. yeah, one of them, one of them uh, doesn't overlap with anything, really. I have to be up in the middle of the night, but I will try my best. Okay. Uh, GG Emini asks, Protoss is strong in Korea right now, but not quite as dominant outside of Korea. What do you think is the largest contributing factor to this stylistic difference? Are KR Toss better than Foreigner Toss comparatively to their region respective races? What influences these stylistic differences? Uh, first thing, there's way more Protosses, I think, that are like of a high level or high caliber in Korea than there are in North America or Europe um like when you think really dominant pro tosses in the foreign scene there are a couple don't get me wrong there are a couple um from each na and europe but they're also first off na and europe are divided so they're kind of like little bubbles but protoss has like in korea has like this huge player pool of like really good players and then they have like the peak fucking players then we have like the you know amateur players there's just a ton of players in protoss so there's a lot of like cultivating of like the, the styles and i don't know i feel like the style is kind of just breaking out now and because there's so many more players here that it seems to be stronger that, that's what i think yeah it's kind of like how zerg was super dominating in in europe and it was just like yeah just a lot of their top players right now are zerg players a lot of the top players in korea are are protoss we don't have that many zerg and that many terran players comparatively number wise yeah i think that that's it's certainly a big part. Also, another thing I think is a stylistic thing is if you look at uh, foreigners generally play a little bit more strategically and uh, Koreans generally play a little bit more uh, execution-based plays. And execution-based plays are really strong with Protoss because you're just trying to like micro well, macro well, hit your timing, that type of thing. And uh, that's, that's the situation in which Protoss is most powerful but then you look at top protosses in na and eu for instance let's take neeb and showtime these are actually more strategic players that play like a longer game they're better at end game like look at neeb he came over in one kespa cup right and i don't think that that was purely off of control i think he had a better strategy he had the better end game with the disruptor tech and stuff he had thought out a lot of things more uh but yeah when you get down to things like execution none of these foreign protosses are going to equal like zest executing a rush right it's a little bit different stylistically another thing to think about too it's interesting that all the protosses in korea have like their own unique things that make them really good at what they do you know what i mean like sos has this unique thing that makes them really good zest has this unique thing that makes them really good stats has this unique thing that makes them really good patience has this unique thing that makes them really good right not none of all those four players are identical and none of them play the same but they're all insanely strong right so that's another really interesting thing. Whereas you look in Protoss is in North America and, and kind of Showtime and, and Nieb are almost like very similar in, in their own respects, but there aren't that many Protosses like that in your in NA and there's not that many Protosses like that in Europe. So 
you know, Hurricane 2, classic. All like, There's just tons of them. Okay. Well, guys, yeah. that was all the questions. Thank you so much to those of you that contributed the uh, dedicated questions. And thank you for your patience waiting, because uh, we did not answer any of them from the previous week, but we got through them all this week. So it's been a very nice show. We had some laughs. We talked about island maps. We talked about the max packs. And we grew as humans and became better friends, I think, for all of it. And I think that's truly what is so important and valuable to all of us. That does it for episode number 52. I want to give a quick rundown of the support that we get in the show because it's absolutely amazing. We didn't get to do it last week in particular, so thank you to all of these people. But if you are supporting us on the Patreon, that is awesome. Actually, over the course of this episode, we tipped over $3,000 as a uh, Patreon. So that's amazing. That's a huge, huge thing. And these are the people that are supporting us. Um, this gets generated in time, so if you just join and don't see your name on here, please don't freak out. It'll be there for the next episode, I believe. Um, but this graphic has to get made. It takes time. But just thank you guys so much. Like I, like I always say, and it just continues to be such an impressive thing, the number only goes up. Um, there's a lot of people that have been supporting us for a year or more, um, or just a long time in general, and we're still getting new people, so that's really, really cool. We don't take that for granted, and we're truly honored, and we hope that the content we make with that support is something that you guys are proud of and excited about as well. We think we have a pretty cool thing going on here. So thank you to everybody that did that. If supporting on Patreon is not your thing or it's not enough, you can go to our Matcherino and type in that code, Vanilla Pudding, one word. This does not cost you anything. And all it does is basically signify to Matcherino that you're participating in our campaigns and our um, partnership with them. And it puts money in a prize pool that we get to cash out at the end. Uh, but it also builds and strengthens our brand. If more people participate in that kind of thing, then it shows Matcherino that we're a good company to be working alongside. So that's pretty cool. There's also, of course, swag you can buy on there. And uh, we encourage you to do so if that seems interesting to you. Last but not least, we have AFK Tea with Mr. Lichen. If you're a tea drinker, please check them out. You can save some money. It's supposed to be pretty good stuff. And they are partnered alongside us. And then next week, I'm seeing this on the screen here from Cobra. It looks like we're pretty much 100%. I don't think we're at there yet, but we're getting close. Instead of our regular Pylon Show episode, we'll be doing this caster show match. So a single best of five, putting some money in the pockets of these guys. And Dan and I will commentate it. We'll hang out with the chat, that kind of stuff. Um, it'll be a lighter week. It'll be just kind of nice for us to take a little bit of a breather and come back for the following week, but also to show you guys some fun content in a different way um, put on by the Pylon Show crew. So that's what's coming up next. And that's that. Thank you guys so much. Guys, I appreciate you. Let me just say, so I went, I can't be as enthusiastically ranty as I, I was with everyone. But because Jake is so confident and BC Cutie is so unabashedly handsome, I knew that this was an episode where I could <laughs> safely rant and rave as loud as I could. I will have to apologize to my roommate and explain some things to Barristan. But other than that, I think we're all good to go. Thank you, guys. Jake, you've been doing some events, but I think it's been a while, right? Do you have anything planned, anything coming up we can talk about? It has been a while. I, I'm i working on another tournament, but it, it's scheduling is like impossible. <laughs> like It's really hard. But I'm, I'm trying to do like a GSL style format tournament where it's spread over multiple days, but with foreigners from the house and Koreans. I'm going to try and get some amateur Koreans, but it's basically going to be like a very mini GSL. I'm planning to have that here. It's going to be semi offline, not at our house, but in like a studio office, which will be really nice. Cool. Um, but yeah, I've got plans in the works. Nothing fully concrete yet, but you guys will hear about it when it's ready. You can follow yeah. me on Twitter for more info on it when it comes out. Yep, no regret At there on root Twitter. No regret. Root no regret. Yep. Uh, Mr. Beastie Cutie, so, you know, you had a big win today. You've been streaming a lot. You're doing great stuff. Anything you want to talk about or anything coming up? Um, nothing in particular. I mean, stream's been going great. YouTube's been going great. Um, you can check me out, both of those, Twitch and YouTube. Beastie Cutie and Beastie Cutie SC2. That's pretty much it. Just, you know, streaming. Uh, I'm going to play some uh, new ladder maps because it was well they came out today in europe yeah. so i'm gonna get them that tomorrow or today i guess because it's 6 a.m and that's very much it thank you guys for having me once again it was a lot of fun and uh always enjoy these yeah very good man thank you for coming on uh mr artosis you're casting some brood war tonight but what else you got going on yeah um well brood war tonight and tomorrow night 
GSL the day after that. The day after that, I go to Busan for the ACS again. Uh, just having a good time. Thank you, everyone, for the kind wishes and all. And just watch the Pylon show in in-depth. Then I stream. Oh, yeah, in-depth. So check that. That's, I also have that going on. <laughs> check out Thanks, in-depth, guys. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> um, for me, I just want to always remind people to give as much love as you can in passing most often. But uh, we've got some really lovely people that make up the team that do this show. Cobra, of course, made a little bit of a name for himself, but Alessandra tracking down the fantastically detailed show notes. Alleluia doing the uh, timestamps, but it's not just those guys. There's a ton of people, and you can see them listed right there. Um, the show would not be what it is without a lot of people behind the scenes giving their time and working the way they do. So I will spend every opportunity I can to thank them because that is just amazing, and we're Honored that people think uh, this is a project worth giving their time towards. So thank you very much. Cobra Show Me too. We also start up a Facebook page. So it's just going to be another way to kind of track down the various different things that we're doing. Um, you can join that, I believe, if you are a part of Facebook. If you're like, no, I don't like Facebook, that's totally fine. It's not mandatory, but it's just another way to be informed, consume content, and be around the stuff that we do. Um, for me personally, I'll be... Doing a Warhammer tournament this weekend. I've been tweeting movie reviews and stuff like that. Um, I do a sh talk show on Tuesdays called The Deadpan Diaries at 4 p.m. We just talk about all kinds of stuff. Not StarCraft related, I, I guarantee that. But it's interesting. And it's all up on my YouTube, in Control TV, where the Warhammer games go as well. So if you want to watch any of that, that's where you'll check it out. Guys, it's been a long, nice episode. I'm going to send these guys to bed. And I'm going to take myself uh, and go do something else. We appreciate you guys. Have a great night, great day. We'll see you later. And in the bottom right, shout out to the Pylon Show, the greatest show on the internet, apart from WCS, of course.